Look here, guys. I am going to stop going out of my way to get guests that you guys request if no one's going to show up. There's two people here, and it's all because Bees Blades is giving away some garbage fucking cut three corner network piece of shit knife. So you go over there and you tell them they need to get over here because the actual king of the knife YouTube community is on my channel right now. There's not, I don't think there's anyone knife YouTube right now that's got more followers than Alex Garland. So before we start, I wanted to call out just two quick things. One, Will B, who is here. Thank you very much for, uh, for this. This is some coffee he sent me. You guys know I have an affiliate with Coffee Brand Coffee. Um, but this is some very, very good coffee. It's from Mountain Air Roasters. Uh, this is really good. Um, and I also wanted to call out that there was a couple of things that got sent. Uh, whew, there's some knives that got sent. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this. It says it's a, but I think it's a Macrotech. This is the Arbiter. So, uh, yeah. And we have two new members who showed up. James, I think they were already members. I think they just resubscribed. Brent, Barney, and James. So, without further ado, let's have Alex come in. I just wanted to do that because I'm, I'm afraid that Alex and I get to start talking. It's, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. There's Alex. Welcome to the channel, Alex. We've talked about What's doing up? this for, we've talked about doing this for, what, about years? a year now? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what, what was it? it I think was, it has been years. It has been. We talked about it, and I didn't know how to do live feeds. Like, I didn't know yeah. how to bring guests on live feeds. Yeah. And uh, what it, we did something in, instead. Like, I, I copied one of your videos, and you copied one of mine. That was, like, the first first thing that, first oh, thing that, that was, we did. Yeah, that was years and years that ago. That was years ago. It was, I, I did the coffee cup. I did sharpening on a coffee yep. cup. You did sharpening on a car window. Car window. Yep. Yeah. And you stabbed yeah, yourself. Was like, like, I just stabbed myself. Don't do it while the car's moving. <laughs> Oh yeah, I did stab myself. Yeah. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everybody here knows. Oh, hey, hang on a second. I forgot. I uh, you may want to you may want to turn your volume down. I don't know if you've been in one oh, of my please. live feeds because I recognize people. So this gets a special since it's like twenty dollars. Yeah, I've got like okay. cranked all the way up. Okay, here it comes. I don't ring the cowbell for free. That's how I recognize. I, I I could do it other ways. You know, we could always do the. I could do it that way, but you know, yeah. why not be unique and have a cowbell? So, yeah, PA in Ohio. Yeah, I, I'm in California. You're no longer in Pennsylvania. So, nope. So, kind of tell us what's what's been going on. I I know that you uh I know that you've been doing the the videos about renovating the house and everything. Yeah, uh, I mean that's that's been like my primary focus for. Uh years year and a half something like yeah. that i mean because i had to renovate my old place before i sold it and then i wasn't gonna buy a house that needed renovation because i was sick of it and then ended up getting a house with that needed a ton of renovation so i'm back to uh square one <laughs> so did, did you talk did you talk about the unique connection that you have to this house uh, oh i'm sorry uh, aiden i didn't read it outdoors 55 welcome your highness man's knife royalty I'm saying you're your knife royalty Oh no! No way. <laughs> I would. I, I know you and I talked that far. About, you and you and I talked about the the unique connection you have to your house, but I don't remember. Yeah, I don't the know video. if I've ever, I, I ever mentioned it uh, on the channel yet. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a house my grandfather actually built it back in the seventies. So it somehow ended up back in uh, <laughs> back in the family, which is weird. So that's kind of cool. I, I mean. Yeah, it is. That, that is cool. that is really I mean, cool. Yeah, I mean, because I was always like, my last house was really old. It was like in eighteen uh, nineties when it was built, and I always wondered, you know, who built it and who lived there, and 
all that sort of stuff. And then, you know, this, I don't have to wonder, I know. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting, you know, one, right. o- one owner house. So it's. Oh, you know. so you, you bought it from the original owners. Yeah. Yeah. My grandfather was a builder and he built it for them and, uh, they, they sold it to us. So that's, it that's was, uh, that's actually pretty cool. Well, I mean, I, yeah. I wound up, I wound up inheriting, um, my, the house that my great grandfather built. Uh, my, my grandfather married my grand, my, my, my mom and dad or my mom's mom and dad, uh, when my grandfather married, yeah. uh, into the family, they, he moved into the house. And so my grandmother had only ever lived in one house her entire life from the day she was born to the day yep. she died. And she only ever spent a total of like, she went, they went to Arizona one time to visit a cousin for like a week. And that was the only, that was the yeah. longest time. That was the longest period of time that she was That's not, crazy. that was, had ever slept anywhere but that house. Yeah. So that's, I got to do a quick. There you go, Aiden. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Or oh, I'm sorry. That's Daniel over at Custom EDC Knives. So, yeah. So you've got the house. Are you working on, get, have you got the shop set up yet? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do now because it's, uh, it's going to be cold here really, really soon. So. I either have to finish it or I'm going to be working in the cold and uh, it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like, I don't, like I don't, I don't think I'm going to have it done in time to tell you the truth, but there's not much I can do about it. So get, get one of those, uh, get one of those, those uh, kerosene heaters that looks like a jet engine. Yeah, I have one. I mean, I don't have, are- I've got a propane heater. It's not one. It's not the, uh, the bullet heaters or what, whatever they're called. But I mean, it'll, it heated it up in here before and it wasn't super, uh, it wasn't like air sealed or anything like that. Yeah. So once I, once I get it insulated and drywalled, I mean, obviously you can see I've got like stuff hanging everywhere, but it looks like, um, looks like, uh, it looks look, like what would it looks be behind like a construction me. zone. <laughs> it, it looks like what would be behind me if I didn't have a green screen, which is why I taught myself how to do a green screen. Cause I got yeah, tired right? of looking like, everybody's like, looks like you do your feeds in your garage. And I'm like, it's because I do <laughs> I my do. feeds in my garage. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, no, I we had uh, uh, the neighboring farm. We had a big shed, a big storage, like a like a, like a like a barn, like one of the the the, the stainless steel corrugated steel Whole insulated building. buildings. Yeah, and it was like yeah. a five thousand foot building, and they used it for oh, okay. butchering hogs, and we'd have parties and stuff up there. But they got it insulated really good. They still ran, they still burn coal, so I had a coal, oh, man. Like a coal stove. And, uh, and just a great, like a great big hurricane fan. Yeah. And they would just, just run that it. thing and just blow across and just like, and it would get, it could be, it could be eight, nine degrees outside. You'd be like, well, it's a bit <laughs> warm in here. <laughs> That's the goal for this place is to make it so that I can come in here in a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> yeah. But you'd walk it, you'd walk in and you'd be like, you'd be, you'd strip down to yeah. like shorts and you'd pull your, pull your Carhartt, uh, you know, your Carhartt fucking overalls down you're like god it's a uh, it's a bit balmy in here <laughs> it's a little warm yeah it's like 80 degrees in here boys how much cold did you throw in there yep no nah, i i kind of i kind of miss I, I like san diego but i kind of do miss the weather i don't i don't like everything about san diego there's definitely things i don't like but i, I yeah. definitely miss i miss going out and hunting in the winter and having her yep. having a deep freeze full of of uh of venison or squirrel or rabbit or whatever i do miss that but it's I like to say that I'm still a country boy, but I don't think that I, I, I may talk country. I may look country, but like, I like the fact that I can literally walk to the closest, just like anywhere you want. Yeah. I, in, tw- in 20 minutes, I can walk to the little, little shop up on the corner and get anything I need for the evening. I'm like, ah, it'll do till I can get to the grocery store tomorrow. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's not like, like a that mile and a half of No, no. Yeah. So, What's been going on with the uh, with the channel? Is have you got anything planned that's coming up? I know I know you did a video ridiculing all of us knife reviewers. I took that, uh, first. that stung. That's <laughs> just kidding. I had nobody in mind doing that video. I was just like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think I did see. I don't remember who it was exactly. Uh. It was a really, it was a really big channel. I do know. I'm not gonna say who it was, but it's a, it a big, you know, knife uh, reviewing channel. I was yeah. like, hmm, I could, uh, I could do something with this. So <laughs> it's just, just kind of a fun, 
fun pokey it, it pokey does, video. It, the, the guys of us that do that, like I try to do it, I try to do it in a, in a fashion because, be, like I said, being from the country, I try to do it in a fashion where I look yeah. at it. From, I look at it from a useful point of view, and that's why when I had yeah, Jim exactly. Stelton on last week, when I had Jim on last week, like John, Jim is Jim's always been a collector, not a user. Like he might yeah. use knives, but not like I always did. So um, I I definitely look at him from a different perspective. Like he's like, I, you know, for me, a budget knife's $300. And I was like, I just reviewed a, a $30 knife that had a locking mechanism that was better than the Benchmade I own with the same locking mechanism. Yeah. Like this $30 knife actually has a better, better pivot and lock than that, you know, that, that $189 knife. Yeah. And so no, we, I mean, we look at I'm... it from different perspectives. Like I'm the guy who's trying to shave like a gram off of a knife. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, the same could be said for me too. Right. So it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> well, you started as a, and that's kind of, that's kind of why you've got a, like a different, there's a, like a different feel for the stuff that you do with knives because like you look at it from a hiking back. Cause I, kind of thing yeah, where, cause I'm where more every of a, ounce. I'm a counts. user. Yep. Yeah. I'm not a collector. <laughs> I have no, I don't have a knife collection. I have knives, but they're not a collection per se. I, I hate to admit that I have knives that I collected, but I still also, you know, I've got, I've got knives that I just beat around on. Like this, yeah. was, a gift. this was a gift from one of my paying members. It's just a yep. plain old spider co police and VG 10. And I, I, I don't like it any less than my thousand dollar knives. Yeah. Yep. No, I totally get it. So somebody, somebody had, I think somebody had a question. Oh no, it was Walt. Walt P says in here because of outdoor 55, well, that hurts my feelings, Walt. <laughs> that hurts my feelings that you, that you only came because of him. I'm just kidding. Uh, is, there, is there a way to see the chat on here? I don't know if you can do it from a uh, phone. If you can get it, like, I think if you get it set up where you can see the chat, then you can't see us. But yeah, I mean, really, yeah, do you okay, really, do you really want to look at me for two hours? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I, I would much now. rather just look at the chat. Uh, uh, okay. Alice. So Alice, AKA Alicord Paracord. By the way, Alice, thank you very much for, for sending. She sent me uh, a knife to look at I, and I haven't mentioned it yet. Uh, she sent me a Grant Gripper. Uh, that I hadn't gotten to see one. I like to see as many knives as possible because I just like your channel was the, kind of the outdoor backpack stuff mine was because i realized there's no brick and mortar stores and i just yeah. kind of wanted to be able to give everybody kind of some insights and, and then you always get the comments well if you don't like the way it feels in your hand why'd you buy it i'm like i, I, I didn't fucking buy it <laughs> it's like i haven't i haven't bought a knife in a while yeah so uh what do we got here murky says uh alex was the main person that got me started sharpening so murky's one oh, of my nice friends one of my paying members. Yeah. I, I saw some of your video. I, I remember back in the day, you had the video where you were using the, the same, the edge pro stones, just like I do. Only you, you had it benched and we're doing oh, yeah, sharpening I still have on it. Yeah. yeah, I do too. That's what I primarily sharpen on. And I was like, I was like, holy shit, I'm not the only person that uses these, but doesn't use the system. I know. Right. I don't remember where I, I think I saw it somewhere. Someone, someone else was using them without the system. And I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. And then, then I started using them, but I can't remember where I saw it. Um, who I saw it at. I saw you start doing it about the time that I had gotten hmm. the edge pro. And I was like, you know, I don't, I didn't like the whole flipping the, the, the knife yeah. around, but I definitely looked at those stones. I was like, well, here's, here's a prime thing. You know, you grow up, you, you were using a little, uh, you know, a, a one inch wide by like maybe two or three inch Arkansas stone that was in a leather slip in your pocket yeah. on the farm. And then you, you go back uh, to that. And, and I, when I've got big stones, I'm not using much of that stone. It just seems kind of a waste to buy a great big full size bench stone Yeah, exactly. when, I'm re when I really don't need it unless I'm sharpening something like that massive arbiter where I want a big stone because that's, I don't know if you've ever tried to sharpen a great big Bowie knife on a on a small little one one by six. Yeah, I mean they're uh, they're pretty small for just about anything, to be honest. So it's I, like any, yeah. anything longer, you know, than three inches, and you're going to be 
I'm all the way. I'm good up to yeah. about eight or nine on those. And then <laughs> after about eight or nine, if you get into That'd like 10, 12 inch, I'm like, it, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> like... I recently had last year, just about the time we moved into this place, I had set the studio up and set the workshop up and I was sharpening a, a filet knife that my friend Mar uh, Tino had made. And I was sharpening it on one of those edge probes stones, like the little narrow yeah. ones. And I slipped off the stone because I don't oh, like I've yeah. done it. I've done it that way so long. I'm just I'm listening and feeling. I'm really not a lot of times I'm watching TV and I'm just I'm feeling how the how the interface between the stone and the knife is. And I can tell when yep. the apex is forming and the, the burr and then I can listen to it, hear it. And I slipped off the stone and I literally ran it clear Looked through like the, there was yeah. an in and out. Like it went all the way through and I felt it. I was like, that went all the way through and I pulled it off. And just like every other knife guy that's cut themselves real bad. I didn't even look at it. I was like, yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. And Tino, Tino was like, did you just cut yourself? I was like, oh yeah, yeah, really good. And I took my hand off and he goes, why is it bleeding in two places? I, like, I know. Like, went, you're afraid. It went all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it, I mean, it was, it hurt a lot, but I just cleaned it up. I finished sharpening yeah. his knives. I had bad shit that was getting paid. So I think, I think, uh, I think Aiden's right. I think you and I both saw the same person that probably was Jay Davis. Remember Jay Davis when he used to do all of his mm -hmm. stuff? That might've been it. Yeah. Uh, I think actually where I saw it, now that I think about it, somebody was using them for axes. Um, cause they were, you know, they're smaller. Yeah. They were using them for the, for an ax. I think that that's where I saw it. It was probably it might have been douchebag Wrangler been, star. You know, I, I was just going to say, I, I think it, I think it might've been Wrangler star. Uh, I fucking hold that. And I was like, "Oh man, that looks like mouth. that. That looks like a good idea. I could probably use that for knives." Um, they turn out to be actually pretty decent stones. So they're really good stones. Um, they yeah, are. They're so, I mean, really, really good stones for the price. And like, I still have mine. They're still useful. I mean, I probably sharpen. I don't even know how many times I've used them. I sharpen a lot of knives because I have the mail-in sharpening service. I've, I think I've went through three sets of them in the last, I mean, that's not like bad. Six years. Yeah. Like yeah. six years. I've went through like three sets of them. I've definitely went through more water stones than I have those. Uh, oh yeah. Those. Um, the, the only time I have an issue is if I, like I'll, I'll fumble finger it and I'll drop one and I'll break it and I got to buy a new one. I'm like, shit, I need a new 600, but to yeah. wear them out, like to wear them out, I've only had to order because of where I've only had to order three times. I had all my stones stolen one time, uh, when we lived in the old neighborhood. Uh, and then, oh, Aiden, I'm sorry. I didn't see your. Oh, the infamous, the infamous <laughs> outdoors 55. So how, what was the, what, what led you to want to start a YouTube channel? Um, honestly, I'm not really sure. I just thought it was kind of like, I mean, I always thought it was fun to make videos, but I never really figured out what to make them on. So I ended up doing, uh, the whole outdoor backpacking thing. And uh, one day I made a knife video cause I was into that too. Yeah. And that was, that was like the first uh, video that actually got views <laughs> outside of like the little community that I was in. Yeah. So I just kept doing that and that's kind of, kind of where it started. It's just like, you know what? I'm just going to keep making knife videos cause people seem to, well, some people seem to like them. Some people don't like them, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember watching, I remember the one I really liked was the one where you, uh, you did that, uh, carpet cut test with two different spider coats. Oh you yeah. Carpet. Uh, you had one, you had one super steel and then you had one just mid range steel. Yep. So I don't remember how I, that video turned out, but I remember, I remember. I don't either. That. that was, that was what, like five, six years ago. Yeah, that was, was a while like ago. 2017, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. That's yeah, because that was about the time I found your channel because I was I was starting, that's five years ago, man. Yeah, well, I had just started my channel and I was trying to see how other people were because I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to do it, but I didn't want to do exactly what everyone else was doing. I wanted to have a channel yeah. of my own. And I this is actually the second channel I started. My first channel was garbage. And uh I did some videos and then John Grimsmo at uh at Grimsmo Knives, uh, he told me he's like, turn the camera around, start putting your face Put a, put a face to the name and I started doing the, the, the front facing stuff for a while. And then I realized that, that people's attention spans have changed now. So you got to show them the knife, like in the first, like six seconds, like if yeah. you don't show the knife in the first six seconds, it's you're not getting changing. the 30 seconds of it. I, I do it. I do a countdown 
for my for my premieres. It's two minutes just so that all the notifications go out. And you'll see there'll be like eight people waiting and it'll drop to two. And I'm like, you can't, you're that, that impatient that you can't yeah. wait for that countdown to end. Yep. Cause YouTube's got the, all the, all the recommended videos right next to it. Yeah. You know, I, so I'll start and I'll have like eight people waiting. And then when a the video kicks off, it's just like me and me and Aiden. <laughs> like we're the only, I'm like, it's just us again. Here we go. I got to yep. people like, how can we not do, why did you stop doing premieres? And I'm like, because by the time I've, Posting a video, I've I filmed it, I filmed it multiple times because I fucked something up. Oh, I yeah. refilmed those parts, and then found something wrong with it, and then had to go back and film again. And then you have to go through the edit and put them all in and watch each segment to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. And then you have to combine it and do your transitions, and then you have to watch the whole thing to make the make sure the audio matches. And then you got to do all your green screen stuff, and then you have to yep. save it. It's and you have process. to make sure yeah, you got yeah. you have to watch it. We have to watch it again after you save it out of the edit, out of the editing software. You got to make sure that it's saved properly. So, you know, a 15 minute video, I've probably watched it. I probably watched about three hours for, e for every. Yep. I, I was telling me and me and another guy we're talking about this for about every every 15 minutes of usable footage. There's probably about three hours that goes into that, if not more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I got to ask, what's your favorite steel for a knife? I know you started making oh. some knives, but what's your favorite, what's your favorite steel in a knife that you don't have to make and your favorite steel in a knife to make? Uh, <laughs> that's a hard question because it, it all depends. It, I mean, it, it really just depends on the individual knife. I mean, you can have, like, I mean, I've had two S 30 V knives, you know, and, and they're both different, you know, it's, you end up getting one with a, with a weird heat treatment on it or something weird with it. Um, but I'm still here. I just, I just wanted to make sure everybody had, I, I don't know. It's, uh, that's a difficult question to answer. Uh, let me think. I think, honestly, I think my favorite steel to make a knife with would be something like 1084. It's just so easy to work with. And, um, it's a really good steel. I mean, if it's heat treated correctly and you have the, you know, you have the hardness, I mean, it'll be, I mean, it'll hang in there with the best of them for sure. Um, I, it's like so many people discount the, the, uh, simple high carbon steels. And it's just like, I think, I think the reason for that is because most of the manufacturers are just leaving them way too soft. I mean, 1095, at, you know, 58 Rockwell is just why, you know, I, I made, I made a knife, uh, here a couple of years ago at 1095 and I did, uh, wound up doing a differential heat treat. So it has a true hamon, and I, I sharpened it up and we, we did it. We did a differential heat treat because I fucked up the first heat treat and we had to do it again. And we we're like, why heat the whole thing up? Why not just instead of putting it in the oven it had already been yeah. ground really thin by the time, by the time I got done grinding, that's when I realized, cause I do everything after heat treat, uh, all the grinding. And I was like, so I had the blank cut out and then I did the, the bevels. And that's when I realized it was really soft. And Elliot and I were like, well, the original heat treat didn't take. And I, I don't know why we didn't, I, don't know why I didn't test it. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll never work with 1095. I don't think ever again. It's just too. It's touchy. It, it, just, it is. It's super touchy. I yeah, mean, we, I mean like super, super touchy. Yeah. If you miss, <laughs> if you, if you miss that temperature range by like a degree. It's, yeah. Or you it's don't get nothing. it into, if, if it's not quenched fast enough, it won't harden. And I mean, that's, it has what, we, to be that's super what we think. Quick. We, we did it because I, I put it in a, a, a just a, a straight up like heat treat oven. And uh, I got it to temperature and I cut the, I cut the side of the packet and sunk it down in, in the parks 50 Yeah, and, and sunk it real good uh, and quenched it quick. But that time it took just that, that amount of time much. it took. Yeah. yeah. Just the amount of time it took to take the shears and cut that, that steel pack, that steel foil packet open. So what we did the second time was we just held it up against the, the door to the, uh, to the, to the oven the, you know, the, the fire brick and, and just, I used a, a, a map gas torch and got it in the color range. And I was like, Elliot, what color am I looking for? He's like sunset. Yeah. He's looking, you're like sunset, like the sun at sunset. And I think I'm there. And he's like, yep. He's like, get it in the oil. I go. 
Yeah. And it, it came out beautiful. And now it has, it's got a true Hamon in it. Uh, and it's got a, a differential heat treat and it is less, it's 0. 0.009 behind the edge and it screams oh, through yeah, it. That's I, pretty thin. Yeah. The guy that, the guy that wanted it, wanted it really thin. He's an outdoors guy and he wanted something that was just sliced oh, yeah. and, and he uses it as an outdoor knife. And he says that the 1095 has held up great, but yeah, hey, some of those skills are so the, much easier to work with. Good. Yeah, once if you get the heat treat right, but I, I that's probably the that was probably the the easiest grind I ever did, uh, and working with because it was so much softer. Yeah. Because I'm used to working with with uh, 20 CB like M390 yep. stuff. I hate my neighbors. I hate my neighbors. God, I hate being in a city sometimes. So, what are you carrying in your pocket? What's in your pocket today? As your every as your EDC for the it day. is PM two dirt and everything. It's, it's not even at least it's not the PM three. I, I don't dislike the PM two. I you're you know, you've always like, been a big Spider Co guy. I'm not gonna say this is my favorite knife because I don't like the uh, what's this the back lot um, compression lock. Or the uh, compression lock. Yeah, that's lock. the compression lock. Um, I like the. I actually really like the Endura Four, but all my Endura Fours have the pocket clip broken off of them. So <laughs> it's like I just move on to the next one. <laughs> I have broken. I I swear I've probably spent almost as much on pocket clips. Yep. From Spider Co. as I have on knives. Because I love the Endura. They, the Endura's, they break super easily. Yeah, I love the Enduras, but I've broken. That's one of the things I've never mentioned in a video. But I have. I have broken. They'll catch on stuff. That spoon-shaped yep. clip just catches on stuff and it breaks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have. I have, too. I have ordered. I have had to order Spyderco pocket clips uh, for Enduras. Yeah, I really like that line. You know, the Endura, the... Uh... The Delica. I mean, it's, I think that that's a really good line. Like they're lightweight, um, which, you know, they don't take up too much room in the pocket, which is huge. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, that's, I, I have said that, I have said that recently in the video I did about this one, that Endura, yeah. as much as I bitch and complain about Spyderco, because I just, I don't, it's not, I, I've come to the conclusion, it's not Spyderco I dislike, it's the fans, it's those fanboys that like, I gotta have I got to have one in every color and every steel and I've got a collection yeah. of knives. No, dude, you've got two knives. You just got like eight of the same knife. Yep. But yeah, I've, I've always loved the Enduras. I think that there's, there's some of the most ergonomically perfect folding knives. They're ugly as shit. Yeah. But yeah. They're, they're comfortable like to use. Yep. They make a great work knife. Yeah, I mean, I, for me, it's a, the fact that like some of these knives, I mean, they just take up way too much. Like they're way too wide, you know. They're way too. Uh, what's the? Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Spiderco makes the. Uh, oh, I just drew a blank on it. But anyway, it's like this wide, so it takes up so much room in your pocket. It's like you can't even reach in your pocket to grab your keys. Are you talking about the Manix? The Manix, that's it. Yeah, it is wide. Yeah. It definitely it's is one of the things wide. I, I like, like that knife, but it's way too wide. Like I want something that, you know, it has the blade length, but it's narrow. Like that's yeah for me. That's kind of the the sweet spot. Now, see, I I don't typically have that issue because well, I'm a big I'm a I'm a big guy. I'm like six. I'm like six, I'm six three two twenty. So like I I got a lot of like my pant pockets are yeah. a little bit bigger. Like bigger pants, bigger pockets. You know what I mean? So yep. <laughs> I typically don't have a problem with that though, because I don't very often put stuff in the pocket with my knives. So I don't, I don't usually do that either, but for like, you know, work it like for me, like I, I constantly, you know, work with tools and stuff. Yeah. Doing, so it's like, I'm always, I always have something that I can't put somewhere else. So a lot of times it has to go in that pocket. Yeah. So you know, you can't have like keys and your phone and everything and a tape measure on your pocket at the same time. So you got to like move stuff around. So it's like, it's, you know, kind of the whole, uh, the logistics, like how do you carry all this stupid stuff and still, still get things done. So, uh, I mean, the yeah. smaller knives for me are like, I'm not a big knife person. Like it's, you know, I don't, I'm not like, I actually have, um, one of the, uh, 
the Spartan. I thought that was a funny knife. And I actually I tried carrying it one time, and it was just a it was a nightmare to carry. Are you so talking from about then that, on, the Harsey, that Harsey Spartan, the, the Spartan, cold, uh, cold the steel Spartan. Oh, the cold steel Spartan. I have yeah. those too. I love that yeah. thing. That's my camp knife. <laughs> yeah. it's in my. It's cool it's in to my pull pack. out and show people. You're like, oh man, look at this. Like, where I the carried, heck did I, that come from? I carried but, that as an EDC for like two months like i carried that as a yeah. primary edc in my pocket for like that's three months because it, way, sit. it's way it too does much. sit yeah. it's big it's huge but it does mass, sit yeah. really well that and weighs then like you a pull it up. pound it is heavy <laughs> so heavy. it is heavy <laughs> aiden aiden asks about the yojimbo how you feel about the yojimbo that's that you know which one that is the the spider co yojimbo i haven't seen that one it's uh, let me see if I can pull it up. But it is a it's a Warren Cliff style deep hollow grind. It's a self defense blade. Uh, no, and it's I haven't not, seen that. I, I'm pull, I'm trying to pick up, pull up a. I used to get the Spider Co catalog every year, but I don't know. I don't know if they stopped doing it or I just stopped getting uh, I think it. It's, it's I well, you and I are both. You and I are both relics, uh, because I don't think that they print cattle. I don't think yeah, they print knife catalogs. Anymore. I, I think that may, maybe that's what it was. They went to do the uh, online catalog, and that's when I I stopped looking at all the models. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up. I don't know what's going on here. It's not wanting to. It's not wanting to put up pull up images. I'm trying to pull up an image of it for you, but it's a. Uh, Open image in a new tab. There we go. Uh, let's see here. I, I something's going on. I only found one that would work. I'll show you a picture of it. So it is. It's a knife that I like, and it it's also one of those ones that I like it, but I would never own it. See how like the it's it, it's definitely oh, yeah, I've built. Seen that. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely built for self-defense, but everybody's like, oh, well, that blade profile is really good and everything, and I, and I do agree, uh, yeah. but it's ground so thin that the whole point uh, is, that the whole point of that thing at the very front is so thin and delicate that for yeah, it's easy it's like a Kiridashi, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it gets so thin and delicate that... It, it's just it's just not functional like i just like the second you bump up against something you're gonna break the tip off of it yeah so nicholas cut or coulter says they still make a physical catalog uh, you just have to request it because they used to send it to me I, like i never requested yeah. it it would just show up in the mail so i have to go sign up again see if they send it to me because it's funny as soon as i stopped getting that I stopped buying spider codes <laughs> like I, other than, you know, other than for, you know, what I'm doing here. But um, yeah, I mean, I used to go through the catalog and look at all of them and be like, Oh man, that looks cool. Maybe I'll, I'll grab that. So I, I, I found uh, when we moved, cause uh, we sold our house and, and rented this place because I, I don't intend on spending the rest of my life out here in California. I'm trying to get back to Ohio. Yeah. Uh, and, and the only issue is my daughter skating, but, uh, when we were going through stuff, I found a box with a bunch of DVDs in it that we had never, I had not opened it in years. Like I, I packed a bunch of stuff up because we had moved from one house to the other. And I had a bunch of the cold steel uh, test videos. Remember the DVDs that oh, they used yeah. to send out? <laughs> I, found, I found those and they're like literally like four and a half hours of them just cutting meat Jeez. and driving stuff through. So when I'm, when I'm doing editing stuff, it's, there's actually <clears> one <throat> of them that's in uh, the, uh, in the DVD uh bay of my my playstation out here and it's just oh, that's, that's just what i put on and i watch it it's just something <laughs> like while i'm tight while i'm typing descriptions and moving files around and changing light and stuff like that yeah. it's just something I, it's, i've always I definitely i've always wanted to try one of their swords have you ever seen I've, have you ever yeah they're not they're not good well no okay there's some of the better production swords but you know i i spent I spent like 13 years in Japan. I took Japanese swordsmanship. I have like handmade Japanese. Yeah. Batons. Well, I mean, just for something it, to like screw around with. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it to do a lot of uh, screwing around and cutting with, but they are there. I mean, they're adequate, but they're, they're, yeah. they're not great. And they're, they're definitely sharpened more like a, a knife than they are a sword. Like you can see uh, on a true Japanese sword, you know, it, it's a, it's a lot like, yeah. um, like a Rockstead where it just, it's a full or a, or a yep. bark river. It's just zero all the way. It's a full convex zero yeah, just, all the way. Yeah. 
yeah and uh that's how they are but their their swords typically have got a secondary bevel at the very front i mean they're not horrible they're definitely some why, the better ones i wonder why they did that that's weird it's just easier it's cheaper i guess um, now, I, I do have to say that the ones I saw were secondhand, so somebody else may have done that, but it looked pretty consistent. Oh, okay. It looked pretty consistent and professional to be something that somebody had done in their garage. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. Maybe I, I get one and do some testing with it. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> see, see get, exactly. a, get, a two, get a two-hand broadsword, be like, so today what we're going to do here in the shop is, uh, actually, I've seen, I've seen guys do some unique things with, with tools that weren't meant to be with her like to, like to drive a sword i saw a guy doing this actually he'd driven a sword into a block of wood and he was using it like a draw knife really like he was dra yeah he was he was making like i forget what it was he, he was doing something like they were camp setting or something like that like they would have done in the medieval days and he takes a fair it wasn't a wasn't a like a big long broadsword but it was yeah like a short sword and he cut it down into a into a stump and lodged it in there and he's got this this piece of wood and he was cutting it. He was rounding it out and huh. turning it into uh, like into a round pole using the edge on the idea. sword. And I was like, actually, you know what? I never thought about something like that. I've seen people do that with a hatchet. Yeah. I've seen it like, done with knives. Um, yeah. But I never thought about, a, you know, a sword being used as a draw knife. That's interesting. Well, like, like <sighs> as like a plane, like he had, like, like yeah. he had, like he was drawing the wood through it and it was sunk yep. into that block of wood and he was just dragging it across it. And I was like, Oh, huh. that's, that's actually pretty clever. But I actually did see a video last night that my sister sent me and she's like, this is some janky shit you and dad would do. And I looked at it and it's, it's two, it's two Russian dudes that had taken a step ladder and some U bracket and a long blade chainsaw and turned it into a sawmill. So they, like they leveled out, they like, got the ladder level. And yeah. they cut the wood off until it was level with the wood, and then and then screwed this ladder Jeez. to the flat part of the wood, and we're cutting off planks of this huge oak trunk. And I was like, "That is some janky shit that me and Dad would do." I was like, "Yeah, that's that's some that's some backwoods that's some backwoods ingenuity right oh, yeah. there." But well, like, the beginning he had, of he the sentence was frame. two Russian guys, so you never know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was, he had made this square bracket. He had me, he had measurements so that he could measure out where the bar was. So he knew. Oh, how, okay. How, yeah. Like he had made like it was an honest, and he was using the the step ladder as the as the rail that he was riding it down. And he would like put he put the saw on the ladder, and then the 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 bar of the chainsaw would touch the wood, and then he'd just push it through. Oh, and I see the, what you're saying. Yeah. So it was like it was like a big it was like U bracket. Like yep. all the way down, like you, like, you know, what I'm talking about you, the, 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 you shape, the, you bracket, uh, that you use for putting stuff up in the overhead running, like running wiring and stuff. But he had like clamped that saw in between it and he was doing that. And I was like, that's actually janky considering he's in shorts with no shoes. Yeah. But <laughs> like, I was like, that's <laughs> fucking clever. Let me, uh, yep. James, James, you get a, you get a special cause it's $5. James, it sounds like this for you. Now I sound like Cole. Sound like Cole over Tri-State EDC. <laughs> so, James, by the way, thanks. Uh, I, I think you just renewed your membership. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I called you out at the very beginning. So, what's the big plans for uh for what you could do in the shop i'm curious because i know that you were starting to like make knives and you were starting to make straps and some stuff like that and there were some legalities about processing payments and things but now i'm curious what the, what the plan forward is yeah i mean just continue doing that i mean i've got some uh i've got some ideas that uh will hopefully come to fruition in the shop but we'll see <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really want to get back into, to, you know, making more knives. I mean, like I've done a lot, a lot of, a lot of knife making, not on video. So mm -hmm. I really want to get back into doing that for sure. Um, hopefully this winter is when that'll happen. Once the shop's done, fingers crossed. But, um, yeah, I mean, get back into doing the, you know, making the straps and the compounds and all that stuff. And, uh, 
hopefully get a website up and going again. So what, what kind of compounds were you making? Cause I, I'm just curious, like I like to try all kinds of new strop compounds and stuff. Like uh, that. they were, uh, they were paste compounds. Well, I wasn't making them. I was getting them made to spec. Oh, oh okay. Sense. Okay. Okay. Um, but you know, they were, they were paste as some would say they're not, uh, hmm. <laughs> not like an emulsion, not like the diamond emulsion I'm using right now. No, no. So I actually, I've thought about actually, uh, selling emulsions, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of them, uh, for a couple of reasons. And I just haven't, I know a lot of people are, so I wanted to carry them. Yeah. Um, and the place where, uh, the place where I got the, uh, the compounds from, they also, they also made the emulsions too. Um, so I, I like the emulsions. Um, I like the emulsions because they're a lot easier to clean off of my strop if I want to change out and don't want to have it. Cause like I use a, sorry, my <laughs> wife and wife and kid are just coming back. Hang on. Let me mute that. That garage door is loud when it first starts going, especially with this condenser mic. Cause it catches so much. Yeah. I, I try, I try, I have a, I have a sound barrier around it, but it still catches it. Uh, no, I, I like some of the emulsions, uh, because especially like the diamond emulsion, like the, the one I'm using right now is gunny, gunny juice. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's their one micron diamond emulsion. And the reason I like it is I can put it on that, on that leather strop. I can, I can just take a wet rag and I can wipe the old strop compound off, let that dry just for a couple minutes put like two drops, rub it around with my finger. And that thing's good for like, for sharpening for after sharpening. It's good for like three knives just to make sure I've not got any burr left just to give it a nice clean, just to make sure everything's yeah. lined up. There's no little things. And a lot of times people are like, Oh, well, you're using the strop to, to hone. And I'm like, there's a lot of times that when I'm using a strop, I'm looking for like, like if you know this, if you if your strop is fairly smooth, like I, I like a finished, strop almost like a like a, a sh like a straight razor strop if, yeah. if you dra if you pull the knife down and it's got any little microchips that maybe you can't see you can see little lines like the strop will be shiny and it'll be oh, little, yeah. little dull lines and i'm like okay i need to go back to my last stone or the stone prior to that yeah and then then because sometimes sometimes even when you're being careful like the please don't let it shut please don't let it shut Sometimes like the dragging your thumbnail down, you can find, you'll, you'll feel a lot of chips and stuff like that, but sometimes yeah. they're really, really fine, but you can definitely see them w when you drag the strop. So yeah, it is, it definitely is one of, one of those ways that I use for diagnosing and making sure I've completely removed the burr and got all the little micro chips that you get in S30V constantly. Do you, do you find S30V to be chippy? That's one of the things I wanted to ask you. Nope. None of mine have ever been real chippy. And I, I put pretty, pretty, uh, pretty steep angles on them too. So I've never had a problem with S30V, uh, being I, chippy whatsoever. I, I have yet to own a knife in S30V where like after like just a couple days of use, like I love the edge that when you first sharpen huh. S30V, that edge you get on S30V when it's bright, when it's crisp and fresh and right off the stone is as good as any steel is ever going to be when it's sharpened. But then like two days later, I've, I just run my thumbnail down it and I've just got nothing but little micro chips that you just feel. It's just like, oh, like holy shit. Weird. And, but the only knives I've ever had in S30V were Spyderco and they were, they were produced right around the same time. They were, they were two different knives produced right around the same time. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe there was an issue with the heat treat. Maybe. And uh, because I like, it's just me birdshot and like one other guy that have ever really complained about it. I just, hmm. I find S 30 V I find S 30 V to be more difficult to sharpen with not, with the end result being not as good as I want. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it has, yeah. it has all the, it has all the negatives of a super steel without many of the benefits. Have you ever tried a two? I have. I like, yeah. I like a two. I'll tell you what my favorite steel, like people are like, cause I, like I'm not, I'm not that guy that chases.
It's all right. You can barely hear it. Jesus. Yeah, don't lie. <laughs> Sounds like a construction site and shit. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I hate. I like they, they just like I, I try, I tried to explain this to my wife. Like this, this is my job right now. Like I have nothing else available right now. I can't do construction anymore. I, every job I try to do, my doctor's like, nope, not with your autoimmune disorder. Not right now. Not this, not that. And like, this is my job. And like, they treat this like it's a hobby. They just come barging through. And I'm like, you know, there's a fucking front door to this house. <laughs> yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> so, um, no, I figured I was, oh, uh, some of my favorite steals that I've like, I've, I've made knives in super steels like 20 CV, S one twenty five V S ninety V. I've done the S one twenty five V is a nightmare. If anyone tells you, oh, you should make a knife at S one twenty five V, don't, just don't, don't do it. It it took me okay because S S one twenty five V when you get it, it comes annealed. It's fifty five Rockwell. Yeah, like it's fifty five. It's like fifty five fifty six. It's as hard annealed as some other steels are after hardening. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's difficult to work with, but I like I like the fact that I was able to make knives in those steels that are kind of unyielding, difficult to work with. I like to challenge mm -hmm. myself. But as far as a knife I'm going to carry, some of the steels I like the best for 440C, 440A, if it's done really well, like Buck. Buck's heat treat on um, on some of their 440 is a, is awesome. Really? It's a great steel. Yeah, 14C28N, hands down one of my favorite steels ever. Hmm. I have to give them. I I I have not had good luck with Buck knives. Um, they're fixed blades. I I have never had real good luck with their folding knives. But like their fixed blades. Yeah. Like like the uh, never had the one of their fixed special. blades. They're they're legit good. They're, they but are. I still. I have to pick one up and check it out. Their uh, <laughs> their folding knives are are pretty much junk. I, I still have a soft spot. Like, I still have a spot. I, I soft do spot too. I know the Buck One Ten. Yeah, with the One Ten, like that's the first yeah. knife. That's the first knife I was issued in the military. Like they give uh, when you get on the ship, they give you that, and then it's not the knife you need, but that's what yeah. they got. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I want to like them. I really do. Like, I really, really want to like them, but. I mean, I've got two of them. The first one I got, it was, I mean, it wouldn't even lock, like right out of the box. Wouldn't the liner lock wouldn't even lock up. Oh, I mean, just like yeah, you, complete, you can't get, see, there it, you went. See, you complete, went out, you went out of what Buck does good. Like if you get yeah. a back lock, a rocker I lock, did. you're good. Just that's I did. it. I have one in a back oh. lock. <laughs> that was the next one I bought. <laughs> Oops, my bad. <laughs> it's the, uh, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in the uh, in the it's mess. Somewhere but, where I where I got really pissed off and threw it in that it, general I'm, direction. Look, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not. It could be a lot better. Like I had to take it apart and file some things down and polish some things, and then it was okay. But like, if you have to take if you have to take a knife apart to make it do what it's supposed to do out of the box, it's, then it's, it's fucking not, bad. Yeah, it's not good. But it's like, I want to like them. I want to be like, look at, look, you know, USA made, you know, <laughs> the same. But it's like, I can go buy, I can go buy Tenacious and the thing is freaking perfect. I wouldn't say that. It's still a spider. Cut. Well, compare, <laughs> okay, compared to what, compared to what Buck was sending out. I mean, it's like, it's way better. I'll tell you an American company that I can definitely get behind because their stuff is awesome is Hope. Okay, wait, who's that? Hogue. You know Hogue, Hogue grips okay. make the pistol grips for, yeah. for, for, for on handguns and stuff like yeah, that? Hogue, Hogue. they started making knives. This thing is... Huh. This thing is great. Uh, this came and I was like, I got it and I saw, I took a look at it and I was like, I'm probably not going to like that. And so I was it, like... Is it actually made in, in yeah. the US? Made in the USA. Okay. It's a button lock. And this is a Warncliffe. Now they've got other ones. This one is uh, this is an Elijahwitz design, and he has a weird aesthetic. But I dig this because it is a really functional blade. This yeah. warranty blade on it. Um, What's the uh, price point on it? I don't know. It was given to me as oh, okay. uh, <laughs> as a gift. I, I can look it up and and let you know. And if, I can probably up. send you an affiliate link so that if you want one, I can get paid for it. Yeah, guys, there's a lot of affiliate links in all my videos. Got a new one. Um, 
yeah, this this thing, I, it came and I was like, I don't know, like it looked weird. But then yeah. it's got this weird, this actually, I think this is still holding the record. I think this is the current champion for the echo chamber. Here, I'll show you. Okay. When it goes oh, into detent, to, when it goes yeah, into detent, it, it has this little pop. So it has this little pop where it goes into detent. Yeah. It's a button lock. And I like it. It's really functional. And this the thing is like for stuff that I do where I can get up on it, I can get it up clear up on it and do detail cutting around cardboard yeah. and stuff. And then still just be able to do some big tasks. And it's not a big knife yeah. at all. And it's in uh, CPM 154. So it's a decent steel. I'd rather have yeah. 154 CM, but still, you know, it, it's still a decent steel. Hogue yeah. has even been doing some OEM. Yeah, I, I heard that. Like Hogue is actually doing OEM now for some stuff. But they're, they're, doing, they're doing pretty good knives at a decent price point and they're, United, they're US made and stuff like that. So. Oh, they want, uh, Aiden, I'll have to, I, okay, I'll tell you what, tell us, tell, uh, I got to go dig out the knife they want me to show you. So tell us what your plans are with, uh, with what's, what else is going to go on the house? You're going to do anything special with the house. You're going to have some big showcase showroom lit up room or something. Well, the house or the shop? Well, either one. Um, no. <laughs> 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 the idea no. is to just make it livable so that i can live in it obviously uh, the downstairs is is done and it it looks nice you can see that i have pictures of it on instagram um oh jesus tripping over my mic stand not, there's not a lot of room well it looks like i'm at this big open area i'm i'm yeah, literally it looks like, like it looks like you have like a ton of room behind you <laughs> so that's gonna fly San a plane Diego. back there downtown san diego it's kind of it is actually kind of pretty uh yeah i was gonna that's something they wanted me to show you this this is the winter blades factor and uh ignore that spot where, where it disappears because it's green uh okay. but this doesn't use this doesn't use any springs and it doesn't use the detent ball it uses magnets oh really and it's got it's the only knife i have that when it swings down fights gravity because the magnets pull it up in yeah that's it a good does idea. have a little it does have a little flipper there's a little green piece here that you can't see that disappears into the background yeah, yeah. But you, it's a it's like a mid-frame flipper and uh it's i wanted to hate it i wanted it to be a gimmicky thing i'm like there's no way that's good there's just no way that that's good i wanted to hate it and i'm like whatever i gotta see one and it came in and i was like the first the first thing i did when i heard it i was like oh fuck and then i felt no. how the decent and action and everything were and i was like yeah god it actually like i i i told jim skeltness i want to retro i would love to retrofit some of my other knives to this action it is it is really incredible uh i've i've never felt it, the detent on it is like when you finger flick it yeah the detent on it is as close to perfect <clears throat> as I've ever felt. Like that's how a detent should feel. And it, and it's because there's nothing there. It's just a magnet. When it goes out to a certain point, the other magnet catches it and it snaps open. And it's, yeah. And it, it's, it's like an access lock, but instead of a spring, there's a magnet that pulls it up into place. Okay. So it's, it's got such a unique feel, and I was like, I really, I really want to hate it. I really want to hate it, but I don't. I yeah, don't. I'm surprised that magnets aren't used more. I mean, I don't know if it's like a cost thing, but um, it probably is a cost thing. <laughs> well, that and just the logistics of like, yeah, like trying to figure out how to position them. Because like, there's even a there's even a there's a second magnet. There's a magnet on here. Like you you can't see it, but it's like right here. There's yeah. a magnet that holds this piece that you can't see uh, because it's John Cena. You know, you can't see me. Uh, <laughs> it holds it in place. And I'm like, I was like, it, it's it's pretty brilliant. Only only problem that I would probably have with magnets is doing, you know, 
doing construction with screws and that's what i was gonna you say. end up having and especially if you're in the you know a knife making shop you've got you know metal shavings everywhere well I mean, see that, that's, that's that's gonna be that's my to... yeah that's that's my concern and i've voiced that and i've carried it a bit but I have not ground a knife. Yeah, I've got fucked up shows. I don't think I'll be grinding knives. I think I think my knife making days are done. Yeah, uh, I just can't stand in front of a grinder. It, it's just those muscles. I've got. I've had so many surgeries on this, and so much nerve damage. I just can't do it. Like I grind yeah. for a couple hours, and then the whole next day, I got like can't move. It, it's like after a football game or a baseball game, you got ice bags on. You're like God, God, all the way up into my neck and shit. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I. That's one of my concerns. Is like it's gonna get metal dust in there yeah like i mean yeah can you probably get in there with some tape and pull I it off so. yeah. or silly putty you know but I, sticky tack maybe the blue yeah, tack if you, stuff if you can't disassemble it super easily that's gonna be a pain it does come apart really does easy. it like it's not difficult at all to no, it might apart. it might not be a big deal yeah but like it's it, but it's kind of counterintuitive. Like you, you look at it and you're like, they're like, oh, well, you don't want oil on this. And I'm like, but every other knife I have, I want oil on. They're like, you don't want oil on that. There's like, I have actually a couple knives here at the house. I have um, the best, oh, I should show you the deadlock. I, I have the, the Grant and Gavin Hawk deadlock, which is possibly the most perfect out the front switchblade ever. Like there is no blade play, mm -hmm. there's nothing. I, but I, it felt a little sticky and weird. And it had a little, and I oiled it and it stopped working. And I literally had to take it apart and wipe everything down with acetone and run that thing completely dry. But I mean, why is it doesn't what size? Cause the tolerances are too tight. Is yeah, that what it's exactly yeah. what it is? I'll, I'll get it in a minute and I'll show you. But, um, so there's some knives out there that just are counterintuitive, like this gravity mm. knife. If you oil the rails on yeah, this I'll gravity it knife, up. it doesn't, it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to slide. It, it causes like that liquid adhesion from the lubricant, even though it's a fairly thin lubrication. Yeah. A th thin lubricant. It's still there's that, a, that, there's a that word metal for on metal. It. I'm trying to think of it to sound smart, but I can't, I can't think, think of it. it. I, I know. It's, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to think I'm, of it, but yeah, you'll probably think of it before I do because I'm 48 um, years old and I smoke weed. So <laughs> everybody knows what we're talking about anyway. So. Yeah, they do. I know exactly. What we're talking about. You, know, you know what we're talking about. We're still, yeah, you know, time. so are you going to, have you thought about getting any knife designs, uh, prototyped and doing stuff that is not, uh, like in-house build? Uh, yeah, that's, I, so <laughs> the whole thing, like that would be, that would be next level for me. Like I can't even figure out how to do sharpening stones, let alone whole knives. So Probably not for a while, but yeah, I mean, I have thought about it. What kind of sharpening stones are you thinking about making? So I, well, <laughs> I have, I have them here. I had some that we've made, um, but we just can't get, get the production with them. Um, diamond, diamond sharpening stones, diamond oh, plates. Okay. Diamond plates. Are you going to try and do some of the, the, like the epoxy bound? Um, um I had. I've done I some like experimenting so with them. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna open up a can of worms here talking about this. Um, <laughs> That's fine. We got we got time. I ain't going nowhere. The uh, I don't even know where to begin. Yeah, I well, have I'll done you, some experimenting with them. You for you sure. talk about your experiment. Um, and I'll grab the deadlock so I can show that to you. The. Uh, the diamond plates have been really difficult. I mean, we like we I have probably I probably have half a dozen of them or so here that we prototyped and uh, we just we, we can't make them cheap enough in order to sell them for a decent price. So, yeah, that that kind of got put on hold. Um, they're they're way better than the competition, but no one no one's going to buy a two hundred dollar diamond plate like it's it, like that's as cheap as we could possibly get it. Are you talking about like the, the the one that's like the the diamond that's in the nickel on top of the yep. the, the steel plate like a DMT? I don't yep. like those. I have probably well, you don't like the ones that are made. I don't. I don't like the no. DMT ones. I I'll tell you, I did find I a brand I that I like. I like those. Yeah, I've heard I've heard some good things about those. 
Um, and I honestly, I don't know how they're making them as cheap as they're making them. I have no clue how they're doing it. Um, unless they're, unless they're made in China. And then I know well, the, the atom, the atomas are made in Japan. Okay. Well, um, I mean, are they fully made in Japan though? Or is that just their company headquarters? No, nah, they're, they're made in Japan. Like most Japanese. And so little, little, here's a little thing. Here's a little, little thing for you. Japanese and Chinese, the, the countries, they, they're not fans of each no. other there's well, there's not there's China, not a lot, a lot of, of yeah fans. i was say there's not a lot of there, there's <laughs> well very, they might be they might, might might be made in taiwan yeah well there's there there's that but uh japan there are japan still has a lot of facilities that that will produce really cheap stuff because yeah. back in the day before before china took over everything everything that was made cheaply was made in Japan and then it moved to Hong Kong and then it moved to China, yeah. like China proper. Cause you know, when we were kids, everything cheap and shitty was made in Hong Kong. And like made in Hong Kong, you, your toys would be made in Hong Kong and it'd last for like 20 minutes and then stop. Yeah. But post World War II, Japan was making a lot of stuff because they had that, that workforce that, that had that national pride in rebuilding the country and they were able to do things at a rate now japan has kind of stepped out of it but there are still a lot of like when i go to visit my in-laws you can still find items that just aren't shipped out of japan very often yeah like you would you would pay a lot more for them in the states but in japan there's still like like quality quality stuff for like a dollar or two dollars we used to yeah. go to the japanese dollar store and it was all japanese made stuff and it was super super cheap but it was really pretty good quality stuff and so uh, there's still a handful of companies that do stuff like that. Um, those uh, Atoma diamond plates are nice, though, because they have found a way to, to cut costs. So you have an aluminum plate and then there's what they call. It's not a film. I, yeah. I, they, they, they call it a screen. And so it's like a, a half millimeter or maybe a one millimeter thick piece of steel that's glued to the aluminum. And that's yep. what the diamonds on. And you can just take a You can take a putty knife and peel that off and replace it. They're still um, expensive to make. I mean, here in the U.S., they would they would still be expensive. Yeah, I think they're like seventy. I think they're like seventy dollars. But I, yeah, I, I think I, that I has know. a lot to do with the industrial diamond and and where they're. Sourcing I don't know it how they're making like profit off of it unless they're I doing. Have no idea. Uh, unless they're getting them way cheaper in Japan somehow. I mean, I I have no idea. But I, well, and that's one of those things that like industry doesn't want you to be able to compete with them so that they they no. have like they have their little ends where they're like oh well we can get this but if anyone else you got to charge them this yeah i went i talked to a lot of people about trying to trying to get these made and that's mm -hmm. that was even with me doing half of the process here yeah um and i'm trying to think of what i can say <laughs> what i can't say without or without, say. Viol without violating a non-disclosure agreement <laughs> yeah, without, like, I, well i i don't have any non-disclosures but i don't want to you know piss off anybody else in the industry um but go for it no one watches I, I my did fucking up, channel I, there's I only 29 up, people here no one's watching this shit i did end up talking to uh somebody who who had done work for another major sharpening stone brand and yeah. uh he he was not fans of them or working for him and that kind of gave me some insight you know talking with him in terms of like okay this is how they're making these things this cheap and this is why we can't do it and yeah. it's like I, I can't i can't really say why <laughs> why um you're gonna have to tell me later we'll have to take this offline you can tell me because I had a I had an above top secret. I'm not gonna tell anybody. <laughs> oh no. I think we just lost him. Shit. Well, hopefully Alex can come back. Hopefully he can pop back in. I don't know what happened. We were afraid that he was gonna have problems with his internet. Uh or did I freeze? Which one of us froze? Can you guys still see me? Can you guys still see me? I need to know who froze. Shit, you guys can't see me, can you? Somebody please let me know if you can see me or not. Alex froze. Okay, cool, cool. Damn it.
Well, we had a good run. It was an hour. Maybe we'll get him to pop back in. I really want to show him this. So I will tell you, you guys, if you remember when I did the video about this. Oh, yeah, here you go. I'm, I'm not going to grab the bell. Thank you, Aiden. Guys, once again, not to beat a dead horse, but those super chats are the best way to support the channel. That's we get us creators. Only get about like 15 percent of ad revenue. But when you guys drop a super chat, we get 70 percent of that. So that's that's just one of the best ways for you guys to support the channel. I'm not I'm, I know that you guys I know that it's as tight for everyone else. But if you're watching somebody's channel, not just mine, if you're watching somebody's channel, and you appreciate the content. Just let them know. Just drop, drop it. Drop any drop any shekels you got. So what I wanted to tell you guys, I was talking about this. That sound you hear that I said sounded like somebody popping their lip. That sounds like a like vacuum. That's because that's what that is. That is so tight in there that when you pull that back, it, it pulls a vacuum. It pulls a vacuum and pops as it comes through. Uh, not pulls a vacuum, I'm sorry. When you pull it back, it pops, it pops around. And then, uh, so you've got definite, super, super tight tolerances. You add a little bit of oil to that and you can't, break like, it, there's too much pressure in this like chamber like it really is like that's the best way i can describe it so i i literally had to take this thing down wipe it down with acetone let me see if i can get my phone back on and we can see i turned my phone off because polly was trying to call me while i was doing a live feed so ah oh, crap this sucks come on back alex you can do it you can do it. Yes. Let's see here. The deadlock is awesome. Um, I, I'm texting. I'm texting Alex right now. Oh, and that's now everybody's showing up, and Alex isn't here. I'm asking him if he's going to be able to come back. So, yeah, Alex, Alex just all of a sudden froze. Uh, I'd imagine it's probably a Wi-Fi issue. We'll give him a few minutes. He's probably going to have to do what I did right before we started this and reset his router because I wanted to ask him if, what he thought about this because I think this is a pretty good outdoors night. So, guys, don't leave. I'm trying to get Alex to come back. Um, but uh. Yeah, I, I, I got really upset. I got really upset with the video that went up yesterday. And it's no one's fault. But like, uh, so I did a video about that uh, cyber tricks. Hey, he's back. Like restart it. Yeah, that's I was just telling him. I was like, I bet he had to restart his uh, his Wi-Fi. Yeah, for some reason, it just it just cut off. Uh, I had to restart mine. Uh, yeah, I had to restart story. mine right before we started this. Sorry, sorry. Ah, it's fine. My wife, my wife and kid were trumpsing through like it was a like it was a circus. All right. Um, what do I do? You have green on my head. Yes, I have green on my headphones. Why is there something that's missing from my headphones? Oh, the logo. Yeah, the logo on my headphones is green. <laughs> that's what you were seeing. I wanted to ask you about this. Have you seen one of these? What's that? This. Oh, there we go. Is the Joe Flowers uh, Hyperlight. And Joe is big time bushcraft. He designed this. Uh, Joe Flowers. Why is that yeah, so familiar? Um, bushcraft Global. He makes all kinds of trips to the Amazon takes people with him, does all kinds of like uh, missionary I can't, work. And I can't picture, can't picture him, but it sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty well known in the bushcraft community and he designed this and he had CGRB do it. And CGRB is a Chinese company, but they're, they do at a great, great job with a lot of their stuff. And what I was going to say is if you wanted to see it, I could send this to you as soon as I get done to uh as soon as i get done with the review of it uh because 
I yeah, was told I, like I could look at keep it. these. Yeah, it's really, really comfortable. And it's a good little fixed blade. It's not huge. And if you get like uh, a tech lock, you can carry it horizontal. You can carry it like scout carry. Oh, okay. But, set up for But tech. it's got yeah. that. Yeah, but it's got that big belly on it. it I thought it reminded huh. me of, it reminded me of, the, of a shrunk down version of the knife that uh, Crocodile Dundee had in the first movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It does kind of look like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a pretty good knife. I'm pretty impressed with it. I like it. Uh, he has two designs. He has one called the Wreck Heart, and he has this one called the Hyper Light. So I had every intention. That's why I had it off the side. And I was getting ready to ask you before we had the kerfuffle with your with your Wi-Fi, which I don't blame you. It, I not think it was my phone. Happens. I don't know what it was. Oh, yeah. Everybody's big. Hey, it's an iPhone. I don't know. Don't use that. My wife's out here making coffee at my job. Uh, oh, Patina Turner says he used to work with Randall. Uh, with the uh, Randall, uh, what is it? Ad Randall Adventure Training, the, the Rat One, the company that makes the Rat One. Oh, okay. So uh, I think, I don't, it's not Randall like Randall in Florida, like Randall, Randall made. We're, I'm talking like Randall adventure training so they had the rat one the rat two yeah so so while you were gone i was talking about this is that other knife this is that out the front that you can't lubricate like i had to take all the i had to use acetone to take all the lubrication out because it is literally there's no here yeah that that, that makes sense there's no gap and when you hear it yeah when you hear it break loose it 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 builds up pressure and then pops like you can huh. hear it, it's like so ask Alec how ask Alex how how light his lightweight knife was. How light was your lightweight knife? I think the last one, the last rendition that I made was like 2.6 ounces. Uh I actually carry it. It's a, it's with my backpack and stuff because I carry it with me. Um <laughs> I'm sorry, I think, my wife is over here goofing with me. I think that that was with the sheath too. That's light. I'll have to. That's I'll have to check. Really it again. light. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it's a uh, CPM three V. I think it had like a four and a half inch blade, tiny little handle. Three V. Three V is a good outdoor steel. Yeah, it's okay. It's not my favorite. But I, I have a problem. The only problems I have with three V and four V is that they rust really easily. They're, they're, yeah, they're not a stainless. Like they're, they're kind well, of I, on the border of stainless. I, I, I don't yeah. either, but like, like for me working with knives and, 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 and refinishing knives for people, the problem I yeah. always had, I would, I, I blast something and then take it over <laughs> to put ceramic coating on it It'd be and I touch yeah. it and I'm like, there's a thumbprint on that. Yeah. So from the blast cabinet to the sink, it basically it was it, it had to be one fluid movement. Blast cabinet, sink, rinse off any of the garnet, keep it good and wet, and then right into the ceramic. Like you uh, typically, you would uh, take it from the sink and soak it for a minute in distilled water to, so you don't get water spots, and then into yeah. the ceramic. If you did that extra step, like that extra thirty seconds, it would be orange, and you're like, ah, oh, you yeah. gotta be fucking kidding me! I gotta go blast this again. And, it was uh it was horrible. Alex Aiden wants to know your thoughts on Magna Cut. I I have no thoughts on Magna Cut. Cause I, I've never I've never used it before. I've never gotten any in that was properly heat treated yet. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen any in uh any in person production models or I don't have any Magna Cut seal here either. I would definitely like to get some and mess around with it for sure. I heard it's really good. I, I like I said, so the first couple of companies that were making knives with it, they they were they were being conservative, but Laren had set out a heat treat protocol and he's yeah, like, This he had is it the heat right treat there. protocol. Yeah. yeah, he had it there and and they were running it soft and it's yeah. it's garbage when it's soft. Like I had one that uh, that was yeah. Hogue. As much as I like Hogue, they were like, Well, let's be kind of conservative with it. Um and uh and it just, it wasn't good. Like I could feel it on the stone. And then I had a Protec that came from Tri-State EC 
that was a magnet cut and I sharpen it. And I'm like, this is, this is not good. Yeah. So I'm no, hoping to wasn't. see some, there's yeah. no way that, yeah, there's no way that he would, <laughs> he put out magnet cut and it's not good. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, well, that's, something that's was definitely I was so wrong. Surprised. I was so surprised. I was like, what the fuck is going on with this? Cause Laren yeah. doesn't, Laren doesn't fuck around when it comes no. to steel. Like that's no, not a joke. What he's talking. Like, yeah. So I, I was like, I was like, this can't be right. I like, did, I had seen, I don't know if I had seen something or read something where he was addressing the, you know, the hardness issue. I can't remember where I saw it, but I know I saw it, something it was, him saying it has to be. I can't it was on Instagram. He he, was it on it, Instagram? It was, yeah, it was, he did a live feed with somebody on Instagram and he was, he was telling me like, look, this is the problem. Like yeah. people are bashing the steel when they should be fucking bashing the companies because they're absolutely doing it wrong. Like yeah, this I is how that. it was set. Yeah. Yeah. 50, 59 to 61 uh, then changed it. Laren said 59 to 61, but I think companies were running it at like 54 or 55, I think. Oh, and I'm like, no this way. isn't... I, was like, this I thought is that he was saying it, it it had to be like at 62 or over or something like that. I, I don't remember yeah, him ever saying 59, 59 to 60. That would seem really low to me. That Yeah, right? That does seem low. Like, I mean, because you, you got to figure like some of the steels, like even some basic steels, you're getting 61, 62 out of. Yeah, I, mean, I can get I can get 60, 63 out of 1084. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've 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 gotten stuff to 67. I like the S125 V knives I've done. It's 67 well, or higher because you yeah, can I mean, score I'm saying that's what it. I've run them at. Like, I mean, they're yeah. like 65, 66 out of the quench. Some of them. Yeah. So, yeah. And then after temper, you're looking at like. A little bit less. Yeah, you know, I don't know what I, I don't know what magnet cut. Like I've never I don't even know the heat treat protocol on it off the top of my head. But, I don't either, but that sixty two to sixty four. Yeah, sixty two to sixty four. That's, that's what I thought yeah. that Laren was saying was it yeah. it performed a whole lot better, obviously at sixty two to sixty four. Yeah. But if they're if they were running it, you know, in the fifties, like that would seem really low to me. Uh, so Aiden says, I got one in Magna Cut. I can send it to you, Alex and Mike. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what one he has. I would have. Yeah. Aiden, is that one of is that one of Stein Grabbers? What is this? Murky says, Crazy Sharp. I honestly think Alex's favorite steel is Spider Co. <laughs> 8, 8 CR 13 MOV. How do you, how do you guess? Uh, no, I mean, it's totally dependent on the heat treat. Like you got two knives that perform completely different with the same steel. I mean, production heat treat versus custom heat treat. Twenty yeah. CV. I, yeah. I, I run twenty CV at sixty four to sixty five. Uh, I think that most production companies are running at sixty one to sixty two, fifty nine to sixty two, something like yeah, that. There, there shouldn't be there shouldn't be any knives running anything less than sixty. In my opinion, like they there's should some, all be 60 plus unless, there's unless some, you're talking there's some about steels like that do, or something. Yeah. Well, yeah I was saying, well there's but, some steels that do okay at right about the 5960. Yeah. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I but, guess it would, it would depend on, it would depend on a couple of things, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just yeah. think most production steels are, they're just still too soft. I, I agree. I got a ZDP 189 Spider Co. that the heat. I was just thinking that. Fucked on it. Like it just. Uh, did you see that video that I did? I didn't see it, but uh, maybe I did see it. I, it. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Because I because I have a ZDP 189 uh, Endura Four. Yep. Same one. I think I think that's uh, I think that that one was 65 when I tested it. Yeah, mine mine won't cut mine won't cut down an entire box. Like really? I, like oh. I have to I have to have it like I have to have the grit. I can't run it anything like I can't sharpen it above like 400 grit. Like 220 is is like that's perfect for it. It's great for cutting boxes open. But like if I take it above that, like yeah. the second, like if I go above 400 grit and I try to cut anything like one cardboard box and that thing you just run your thumb on it. I'm like, "What the fuck is up with this?" It's huh. got to be a super coarse edge and it's got to be the heat treat. I just, it was a gift and I don't carry it. Uh, yeah. It just sits over there, but it, it would be nice to actually. I can't, uh, I can't think of the uh, heat treatment 
off. I mean, I, I don't know. I have no idea what it is for ZDP 189, but I'm sure it's not a simple process. I'm sure it's a, a fairly complex product. Like that's what a lot of people don't understand. Like some of these heat treating protocols are really particular. I mean, like if you, like you have like a 25 degree range to be inside of. Uh, some of them are even way are even more picky are than tighter. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I I'm think, just, I think Elliot my head, I'm thinking M4, but yeah, M4 is pretty tight. Uh, S one twenty five V is like a matter yeah. of like eight, like eight to ten degrees. Like if you're yeah, off if you're by outside, like eight to 10 if degrees. you're outside that range, like you could totally. I mean, you could get who knows what you're going to get. So how are these production knife companies heat treating giant batches of this stuff? You know, and they're not testing I, every single blade. No. And I mean, they, they, they do slide through the cracks and I do understand there's no way that they can do the same heat treat protocol. But when I would do, when I do knives, uh, in, in 20 CV, like I could only do three blades at a time because you're, you've got them in an oven at 2200 yeah. degrees and, and trying to, to manipulate, getting them out and they're, they're plate quenched. So you, yeah. you got to quench them between two big, thick aluminum plates and suck that heat out like that. Yeah. Um, and three blades is about like if you're do it if you do it perfect and there's no hiccups, your last knife is still needing a little surface work because the packet just disintegrates at 2200 degrees. Yeah. That's the maximum for that steel foil. Yeah, and it's just like you're like, man, this is this is bananas. This is nuts. Yeah, it's it, it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I I don't know how these larger heat treatment companies are making sure that I mean they've got giant oven. I mean I think Laren talked about this in his book. Yeah, uh, it's like they have the big vacuum ovens. Uh, yeah, with I mean they have a, they have a temperature range range inside those giant ovens. I mean, I think that these smaller ovens are probably more accurate than what they're doing. Yes, and for some of these steels, that's really important. Um, and that's that's, just why, like said, that's why production versus custom. Yeah, that that's why I, that's why a lot of times like guys are like, oh, I, I wouldn't buy that knife. It's it's only in in you know it's only in you know fourteen C or if it's it's only in, in you know. Uh, VG10, and I'm like, I got news for you. Those steels they've been using for a long time, and they got that stuff dialed in. You can go and spend two, three hundred dollars on a on a knife in that new steel that you're not sure. Like, yeah, those those Protec autos, the Bob Terzola autos, those things were like four hundred bucks, and they're in Magna yeah. Cut. They're in Magna Cut with a fucked up heat treat. I'm like, there you go, like a new steel. You're not sure what you're gonna get, and you got trash. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's like I was saying earlier, you know, 1084. I mean, it's really I'm not saying you can't screw it up, but there's a very good chance. Like once you got it dialed in, like you're going to hit that every single time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this stuff, I mean, it's tough. It holds an edge decently well. If it's hard enough, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with it, honestly. Well, it, the, the other thing too, like you're talking about diamond plates, a lot of those steels that they're running and they're running like these super crazy steels at super high heat treats. You got to have like, you can't sharpen them. No, you can't sharpen those things. And like I can, but like most people are like, oh, I got this knife in and it got dull and I tried to sharpen it and I, I just can't do it. And I was like, it's just ate trying through to do the it. stone. <laughs> I was like, he's like, I fucked up a stone. I'm like, I bet you yeah. did. Cause that, that shit is Fuck it. You have to have a diamond stone for that. You start yeah. getting up into some of those like 66, 67 Rockwell uh, aluminum oxide stone will probably still work, but it's not going to work well. Yeah. You need a, you need a pretty hard stone. The, the softer aluminum oxide stones will just disintegrate under. Yeah. I, that's why I have those. Uh, I have the edge pro diamond matrix stones um, that are a, they're a, a, a they're a bound yeah uh, diamond stone and they work really good and they give you the feel of they give you the same like you get the same feedback from those that you get from an aluminum oxide mm -hmm. but they're way softer like if you if you like if you get your angle off or if you like you you bump it and you get your tip up it just cuts a, it just you're like oh fuck i gotta flat yeah. this down because then then it's not soft like it'll cut a groove in it you can cut a groove in it with the tip of a knife or if it's like if it's if it came and somebody fucked it up and it's got a really like a, a bad chip or really heavy burr yeah that you didn't get all of it off and you run it down the first time now you got that line yeah and it, you're like oh it cut really easy but then the next couple like the next couple passes like a click 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 and then you got all these like your, your fucking edge is all fucked up and you got to yeah. clean that stone off and then go back down a stone it's just 
it, it's it, you definitely do have to have some of those things. Aiden was talking about the Sandrin, uh, the Sandrin knives, the tungsten knives. I sharpened one of those on the channel. <laughs> the tungsten here. knives. I sharpened it with those diamond stones. I think. Uh, no, it was, yeah, it was the tungsten carbide. Uh, Pete was supposed to send me one of those. I think he ended up sending it to someone else. Who? Uh, Pete from uh, Cedric and Ada. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't talked to Pete in a while. I need to get Pete back in the channel, too. Maximet's um, another one. Maximet is like 17% tungsten. Yeah, I need to... That, that's probably the next one on my list to get something in Maximet. I'm not a fan of it. It, it never I, I can't takes, tell you. I've never, never, never had one. It never takes a good fine edge. It always feels gritty. And I heard as, you're not the first person I heard to say that. Yeah, it doesn't ever but, take like a good crisp edge. It just always feels kind of gritty. It cuts huh. and you can get by with it. Like you can get it, but like anything, it, it's just kind of a waste to try and go all the way up to like a thousand grit. It's better like I mean, five, I, six, I don't sharpen like anything to a thousand grit. They're all <laughs> they're all That's, super coarse. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it, depending on what you're doing with it, too. Like, I have yeah. most of my customers are doing like more detailed, fine cutting where you want a, a smoother cut. For me, uh, it's sharpening know. pencils and yeah, it's nice. insulation and pushing through drywall, all kinds of stupid stuff. So, I don't majority need majority of my knives. <laughs> majority of my knives are like 400 grit. It's like, this is, I think, this one yeah. is at six. This is at 600. Yeah, DMT uh, fine is about as fine as I go. What is this? I love that Alex isn't lost in our world of hype train steals, hype, hype <laughs> train knives and steals. Hype train steals. Hype train knives and steals. Yeah, there, there's a, there's a lot of guys that that are on that hype train though, and they miss out on a lot of stuff because I mean, like, I can oh, understand well, I, it. I won't get it if it's not in that steel. I'm like, well, then you're missing out on a really good fucking knife. Yeah, you know. Uh, because the majority of people that are doing that are not people that like. For you, a knife in Maximet might be a good investment because as long as you don't torque it you're not going to chip that it'll hold that shitty edge it's maximet takes a <laughs> shit edge and holds it forever yeah for yeah. fucking ever yeah i uh i'd much rather have something than m4 i'm not sure why it's not used more well actually I, I do know i do know why it's not used more because it's a pain in the butt to work with but um I, i've yeah, sharpened I'll, I'll, a bunch of m4 it's really good Oh yeah, I love it. It's probably my it's probably my favorite super steel, if that's what you could call M4 nowadays. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's stuff. I mean, it just takes a ridiculous edge, and it it holds it. Like it's a noticeable difference. So usually, I'm like, yeah, you can't tell a difference between a lot of these. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell a difference with a properly heat treated M4. Yeah. Um, I I have to admit, as much as I'm not a fan of Benchmade. Benchmade's M4 is really, yeah. really good. It's really good. They're heat. I, I have to say that I, I very rarely have had any issues with a Benchmade heat treat. I've had yep. some issues with some Spyderco heat treats here and there. It's not anywhere near as bad as it used to be, but Benchmade's heat treat is usually pretty much on point. What is this? Yeah, I haven't. I haven't really had any problems with any Benchmades. I have some family members who have them, and I sharpen them here and there, and they're all, they're all great. I mean, you can tell as soon as you start to sharpen, you're, you know, you're like, oh yeah, that's exactly what it, that's exactly how it should, yeah, be to sharpen. Um, yeah, it's exactly. What, oh, Zach is here. Zach stuff is here. Hey, Zach. Um, yeah, I, you can definitely tell, like, especially if it's something you're used to sharpening, like if you've sharpened, oh yeah, like I, I sharpen a lot of, well, I wind up sharpening a lot of different steels, but I've sharpened enough knives over the course of the last, you know, literally thousands of knives. Most of the videos until here this last year, most of the videos on the channel were knives that came in from customers. So you figure yeah. I'm on like almost 2000 videos. That's a lot of knives that have come in for sharpening, you know? Yeah. So you get used to sharpening certain things and you know what it should feel like. You can definitely tell when it's been done well and when it hasn't. For sure. Um, I I do have to say there are a couple stones out there that I would just love to have. I just can't justify the cost. Uh, this guy, have you ever seen you ever seen Big Brown Bear's vitrified diamond stones that he sells? Yep. Oh, God, I want one so bad. Yeah. Like I've sharpened with one at, I was at blade show West in Portland and I was sharpening Maximet on one of those. And it, it was one of the prototype stones. And he was like, how's that? And I was like, I want this. 
Yeah. And it's like, they're like 400 bucks. And I was like, I don't fucking want it that bad. They, pro- they probably should be more than 400 bucks. I was going to say, it probably should be. I think that's a very thin margin. I think that, that yeah, I think that's a pretty good deal, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, but I've never had, I've never had a diamond stone that cut that aggressively. And, yeah. and that was like, it was like a 600 grit. Like it, that was been, that would have been, I would have been fine with the edge of that coming off of that stone and been yep. done. Like, if it if it wasn't chipped, if it didn't need to re, re reprofile and have the edge thin and stuff like that, like just it was nuts. Like just a couple passes and you're like, that is insane. And just the feedback you got from it felt like a natural stone, yeah. like a water, like a like a water stone, like a natural water stone or one of the composite stones, like like I use, like the uh, like the smart the sharp pebbles or like the you know the the double sided you know. 1,600. Yeah. It, it felt like that, like an aluminum oxide stone or like the edge press. You got that feedback, but you didn't have, it, it just kept cutting and it didn't load. Yeah, it doesn't and you just like, could see yeah. how much you're like, good God, this the, thing's The loading is one of the biggest problems with those, I think. But I mean, I guess, you know, I, he doesn't make those himself. Like he doesn't have a facility that no. makes them. He gets them made. He gets them made and sells them. Yeah. From somewhere else. I'm pretty sure Aiden I know who it is. Grit. Aiden says what grit. And I was like, I I don't know. I would love to have like probably a thousand grit ones. <laughs> yeah, I was like six hundred, maybe a thousand, eight hundred maybe, like a good all around, like good yeah, stone that I could use for a lot of stuff. I am just the the amount of time. Like when I when I started getting some of those diamond stones, um, the amount of time it saved me on doing like S ninety V. You can do S90V on aluminum oxide. It's not impossible. You can do you can do ZDP 189 on aluminum oxide. It's not impossible. You're still like you're still using something that is at a nine on the rock well when you're cutting things that are in an eight. It's just the yeah. fact that there's so much of it and it is so hard. It's on the verge of of squeaking and things like that. Depends how um, dense the stone is too. Some of yeah. some of the some of them. You know, some of the softer ones are just not, they're just not dense enough to hold together with the harder steels. Thanks, Aiden. I'm not ringing that bell. Cat, get, the cat is laying on my, my knife case is open and the cat is just like laying in my knife case. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Got it. So, um, somebody asked what your plans are for the shop. Like, what all are you going to have in your shop? I saw that a, a little bit ago and I, I meant to ask that. I mean, the plan is, is to just make it a livable space rather than having like insulation hanging down and, you know, exposed wiring <laughs> Yeah. and worry about, you know, my heat treat oven catching the insulation on fire. I mean, it's just going to be a drywall. Wait, insulated. I remember that. I remember <laughs> that video. You you had a fire in your shop in the one video. No, I didn't, didn't have you? a fire. I didn't, I didn't have a fire then? in the shop. I started a fire in the shop one time. <laughs> I didn't have a fire oven. in this shop. I had a fire in my shed. I don't know if I was that on that a video. On... Was it on I a video? Know if I put that in video or not. It might have been I... one of my failed videos. I might have put I... a snippet in another video or something. But I, you, you yeah, almost have... burned that thing down. I uh, trying to quench I almost... a giant blade. I uh, <laughs> I almost burnt down Fair and Forge Knife Works one time because they they had their heat treat oven. And the, one of the two, I'm not going to enter which one of the brothers decided that right above the heat treat oven was a good place to uh, store packing materials for shipping knives oh, and yeah. some bubble wrap and a little bit of foam, like, uh, like the, the soft black and white, foam, almost That's like super and flammable. Man. Yeah, it, fucking, yeah. <laughs> it, it gets in front of the oven and I, d- I hadn't gotten the door all the way closed. And all of a sudden, fucking this other kid, Robert Bodiger's like, hey, yo, shit's on fire. And I'm like, huh. Oh, crap. Got it. Put up. Here's the thing: yeah. you're both in the military, so like, you, like fires break out on the ship. You, you shit you yourself. Just you got nowhere out. to go. You're like, yeah. we got to get that put out. So I'm like putting it out, and he grabs a glass of water, comes over, throws it. I'm like, I'm glad you didn't grab my glass of whiskey. <laughs> that been yeah, a, that would've been bad. That's a fire. <laughs> so yeah, making making everything a little bit more safe in here, more I don't know, professional. Everybody giving me a hard time. Videos would look more professional if it wasn't insulation hanging down. It's like I I know they would. Can you give me a second? Here's the thing. Like I that's the thing I always loved about your channel. It was just unabashedly <laughs> it's, 
it is what it is and that's like i've changed the way i do videos because like this is what i do for money now this is what i do for a living but the fact is like i still want to go back to the i would love to go back to it being like on a tuesday i got nothing going on tuesday afternoon i'm like fuck it let's make a video like no prep no nothing now i got like fucking shit i gotta prep and i gotta figure out lighting and I, I, yeah, it ends up I'm being like, too I, complicated, and your your videos are worse than they were. You know, that's how I feel. It's like well, the simpler I, it was in the beginning, I felt like my videos were better. Now I got all all the stuff I could ever want. You know, yeah. I got like two two freaking giant cameras just sitting here. It's like before I didn't have any of that. I still film on a phone. Like I, the only thing I've added is I've just added some. This is literally just a big green curtain. Like it's just a big, yeah. it's huge, it's and it sits in a rack. That's the only thing I've added. I've got better lighting. Well, yours and looks I, better I, than mine does. Well, that's because that's because each one of these lighting panels that I use now are, are like a hundred bucks each. I know, I, and that's I, I don't have any lighting in here. That's what I'm using. I'll send I'll send you a link. I'll send you these things are light. awesome. The nice thing is you can charge those. Like you can charge them up, and you can use them for like. I know that they'll last for three and a half hours on 50% because that's how yeah. long Jim Skelton and I went live and they finally died. But like you charge them up, you don't, you just put them on the light stand, you don't have cords laying around, you can put them anywhere. Yeah. Um, they've got the universal mount, but yeah. Shane Gable says, Alex, I need a quote. Is this even wood end quote t-shirt? So I, I had them. They were on my, uh, they were on YouTube, but no one bought them. So I took them down. Because that's you can, the whole thing. People are like, I want merch. I want merch. I want merch. You go to the trouble of getting merch, and they're like, Yeah, I'm not fucking buying that. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, dickheads. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe I'll do. I I don't think that the YouTube merch things. The it, it's kind of a dumb system, if you ask me. It's not a real good, uh, real well set what. up way I'll, to I'll do you merchandise. In. I think I'll get mer- you in touch with Ember Shirt Co. That's who does yeah, my that, merchandise. Yeah. It's got to be, uh, it has to be not through YouTube. Yeah. Just put, yeah, I, that's what I did. I have like the, the link is down below in the videos. That's why I always say. So like they, they do re- their sh- and their shirts are really, really good. Yeah. So uh, I'll get you in touch with them because here's the thing. Like they'll just, they'll ask you what you want. You send them a design. They'll tell you like how much, mm-hmm. how much it's going to cost and what your initial investment would be. And then they, they basically print on demand. Uh, it's a couple guys up in Washington that I'm friends with that owned fiber light fire starters. I don't know if you've ever seen them. So they make a, a completely waterproof tinder with a ferro rod. It comes in a kit. And yeah. You, yeah, it's a really, really good product. But they were like, everybody told them that they wanted them to start making merch. And so they started making shirts, but they've, they've kind of went into the knife and outdoor community merch, just like uh, Demolition Ranch went in with like the gun community. So he's yeah. got, they've got bunker branding. So us knife guys and outdoor guys, we've got Ember Shirt Co. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys, hiking with a Viking. Uh, what was it? The, the Bushcraft Bodybuilder and some other guys. They they got their merch there. And uh, their shirts are really, really good. So um, if it takes PayPal, I'm all over it like bird poop. I don't know what. <laughs> I have no idea what Aiden was talking about. I'm on it like a fat kid on a donut. So once the shop is done, back to knives and strops, Alex. I believe he already answered that question, but yeah, back yeah. back to uh, I. I mean, I have a lot of stuff that is on the back burner just because you know I've been dealing with the whole house situation for a year. But I mean, as soon I, the as, last soon video as the I shop's saw, done, look, look I got to get really back good. into making videos because it's like YouTube, YouTube doesn't look too favorably on you if you don't post a video for six months. So, bro. I skipped a Monday live feed and they were like, Hey, guess what? We're not going to show your fucking videos to anyone because you broke your schedule that you arbitrarily set. Like I didn't, it's yeah. not like I, it's not like they I like, have a set schedule. They like the, the weekly or daily. They like the, the constant uploading. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they've got, who knows what they like. They've got all kinds yeah, of they don't. weird things. Like if you, it changes if you every the, fucking week. It does. It changes every freaking day. If you look at the YouTube trending page, you're going to be like, what? Like, that's what they're pushing is what's on the yeah. trending page. It's well, like I, bull I, will, crap. I will tell you, I have some, I have made friends with some people that have like a million, 
like several hundred thousand. So then they're not, it's not knife channels. It's other channels like music yeah. channels and, and, and current events and things like that. But you know, like I've got some friends now that have got like millions and millions and millions of subscribers. And what they tell me is because they have direct access to YouTube. They're telling people like, you have to do shorts. You have to do lives. Yeah, I'm You've not doing shorts. Do I'm never doing shorts ever again. Then you're just not. But your channel's already huge, though. So, like, you can get away with it. But, like, channels like mine, I have to do shorts. Because, yeah, like, they're I, not. What they're what they're doing is they're like, oh, if you don't do a short, if you don't do shorts occasionally, uh, we just kick you down the algorithm. I didn't do shorts for, like, yeah. two weeks. I, I'm getting, like, literally. I, I'm getting a quarter, if not less, of the views. They don't. The YouTube doesn't pay for them. I mean, like, what's the point of doing a short if it's it's 60 seconds of my life to, to because what they'll do is then yeah. they start recommending your channel again. They black. I, guess. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'll just do it for that, for that. I, sake, we, but we can talk about that. It just offline seems because, I, like, yeah, I'd rather yeah, do it, like, if I want to do that, I might as well just do Instagram. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Nah. Ah, nah. Yeah. I had, I had a knife. Oh, we were talking about little knives. Yep. That is a great functional little knife. If you were ever looking for a small little not shop knife, like if you're going somewhere and you just wanted a small little pocket knife to put in your pocket. Yeah. I might I might send you a couple knives on loan since you have kind of been out of the Yeah, I'm, out I've of been the totally out of it for a while. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll tell you what, I've got I got so much stuff because I designed for artisan. Uh, I designed my little fixed blade knife for artisan, the little sea snake. Mm -hmm. I've got, so, I've got stuff I can send you so that you've got like some out of the, the box content. And the nice thing is this isn't a new steel. This is yeah. a different steel. This is a, a steel I really like called ARRPM nine. It's proprietary powdered metallurgy. It's a, it's kind of similar to nine CR 18 huh. MOV, but it's oh, okay. got some rare, it's got some rare earth elements and some cobalt in it that just make it do some weird stuff. Like it strops up. This is one of those steels that will strop up from dull. Like I can't do anything. And on a strop, you can bring it back to, to sh shave and hair off your arm. You're like, what the fuck? Huh. And, and on, on newspaper, like stropping on just a piece of newspaper. That's like the best strop for this. Like I don't use a regular strop for this. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Well, I'm sorry that yours didn't lock up Shane. <laughs> But I guess, guess what? They got a warranty. All you got to do is call them. It is, I mean, this is one of those, this is one of those, like I, I say it all the time. Like I, I always talk about budget knives and this got sent to me from the company. So like Nick Shabazz has, Nick, Nick Shabazz says, I have to assume that this was the best one that they could find. But it's pretty good. And it's like, I think they're like 50 bucks, maybe 70 bucks. And like, if I get one and because you can still, their warranty is actually pretty good. They'll take one back if it, if it doesn't meet your expectations, they'll send you a new one. So this is, this is one, this one's a lot of fun. I really like it. So I, I like, I like finding knives that I, I don't care about country origin. I like finding knives at the yeah. under hundred dollar price point that just literally surprised the shit out of me. Like you get a knife in and you're like, I, that's why I stopped checking the price when I do my first impressions, like I have no idea what the price of a knife is until I do the full review. Like I'll do the first impressions video. And then like a week or so later, I'll do the full video. I have no fucking idea what the price is. Yeah. I think that's that way. A good I'm, way, that way yeah. I'm not like, ah, oh, that's a sad ah, fuck. It's only 70 bucks. <laughs> yeah. And there's been a couple of knives. I think that's a good that, way to do it. Yeah. There's a couple of knives that I got mad about. There's a couple of knives that I was mad at how high I had set my expectations of what it was going to cost. I had a couple yeah. of knives that came in and I'm like, this has got to be like 200 $250 knife. And you, you pull up the price spec sheet, the spec sheet, and the price, you're like, don't, you fucking made it 70 bucks. I ain't no fucking way. Yeah. Like I was mad. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how some of these companies, oh, well, I do know how. If they're, if they're being made in other countries, then I know how. But I mean, it's, it's tough to manufacture stuff at a $70 price point. You if know, you're going to knife. knife, if you're going to knife manufacturers, yes. Now, if you can find a machine shop that's willing to to go out on a on a on a risk and say, "Hey, let's see if we can prototype some stuff," I do know that making knives, machining knives, is different than like just making parts. But yeah. some of these machine some of these machine shops are making like machines, like they're making complex moving parts and putting them together before they ever leave. And I'm like, you know, and and some of those guys are like, 
why like i've actually talked to a couple of them they're like why does it cost so goddamn much to make a knife in america and i was like it's because you had knife makers and knife designers and collectors that then taught themselves how to do machines and then they started doing it and they're basing it off market value as opposed to what it truly costs to do it you mm -hmm. know what i mean so you, you got to kind of get outside of that realm and like machining a knife is like machining the parts for a knife is no different. You just got to make sure that you got everything dialed in so that it all goes together and works the right way. Yeah. And if you got a good machinist, he's going to, he's going to do several runs and dial in that. Like he's going to tell you like, Oh, your design is fucked. You got to fix this. Like that's not going to work. It doesn't work. You got to fix this. Yeah. So that, that's, that's and why American a lot made it, For sure. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of upfront, you know, there's a lot of upfront cost. I mean, there's a lot of upfront, designing and mm -hmm. hearing that has to go into it before you're even before you even have a functioning knife yeah uh, but i mean like alex steingraber granted he's making a lot of fixed blades but alex steingraber is making some really good knives in some high-end steels and he's doing on machine and most of his stuff's like 175 bucks so yeah like it can be done no it can like, be I, done, granted, yeah. he's doing it in-house but the fact is like doing it in-house or doing it in a big factory it's, you know, with the exception of having to pay for employees, there's not much of a difference. You know, yeah. that overhead's good. The, over, the cost is going to be the same. If anything, doing it small batch is going to be more expensive. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's the only way to get it down is to do it in larger batches. I mean, yeah. you can do a run of 10,000 or something, you can get the price way down. Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> you're looking at a lot of upfront money Yeah. You know, for a run of 10,000 or I mean, even around a, a thousand, I mean, that's a lot. Of well, yeah. I mean, in, unless you kind of like look ahead and like, how, how much am I going to need? Uh, like how much material am I going to need to make it cost this? And if you go all in and you're like, okay, we just yeah. buy all the material we need. We buy, we buy, we buy like a big batch and then we just make until we're out and then we buy big batch again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like if, if you're willing to take that risk, then it could be profitable, but it could also fucking sink you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's like ah, exactly. Yeah. Either yeah. we either we do really well or we live under an overpass. I'm not sure which way we're gonna go with this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Now I do have a couple questions that I usually like to ask other knife guys, but since you're not really a knife guy, I'll, I'll curtail some of those. Um, what would be your choice? Like if. Like you're independently wealthy. You just won the publisher's clearinghouse. You get $7,000 a week for the rest of your life. What knife would you buy? That's like, I've like, I've got it. Like, what's that grail that you're like, money's no longer an option. I'm fucking getting it. Uh, <laughs> so there's a couple of custom makers who I'd really like to have. And I, and it's money's not really the thing. It's just that I can never get them when they have stuff available. Mm -hmm. Um, I really, I really want a Jack Lore knife. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, uh, of the of Jack Lore. Uh, Sandy makes the uh, bushcraft knife. Yeah. Um, I really want one of his knives, but every time he has them available, they're going in like two seconds, so I can never get one. Um, so that's I'd have the, to, thing, I'd have to just like message him and be like, hey. Like, you know, just hold one back for me. Like, here's upfront money. Just make one for, you know. But I've always wanted one of his. Um, but I also, I'd like to have, I'd like to have a couple of YouTubers knives. You know, Jeremy from Simple Little Life. I'd like one of his. Yeah. Um, and they, that would be my collection. I'd, I'd start collecting those. Uh, they would Other be YouTubers used. knives? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people who I've, you know, talked to or, you know, who I've watched their videos and learned something from. Like those are the, those are the knives that I want. I'll get you, I'll get you one of, I'll see if I can get you one of my, uh, one of my sea snakes, that little fixed blade Warren cliff. That oh I yeah. Yeah. I can probably, I can probably get, I can probably get artists and send you one because you'll probably do it in a video and get it in front of more eyes than anyone else. Yeah. I can put it's it in a video. Beneficial. Sure. Yeah. It's just beneficial for them. But I, don't, I like, honestly though, don't, don't hold back. Cause I, I fucking am. <laughs> Like I get knives in it. People are like, Oh, I love this thing. And I'm like, do you really want me to review it? And they're like, why? I was like, cause I'm going to find something wrong with it that you haven't seen yeah. yet. Like, yeah. at least I tell you like, Oh, I just got this knife. I want to send it to you for review. I was like, no, you don't. 
I'm going to find something wrong with it and I'm going to shit all over it. And then you're going to be like, you're going to yeah, get but it that's back what you should want. Like, yeah, you but want, I mean, you, you have, want someone to be like, Hey, look, what about this? And you're like, Oh, I didn't think about that. You know, well, no, I mean, guys that buy knives, I'm not talking about designers. Oh, yeah, I know, like design. I know what you're talking hey, about. Yeah. yeah. Designers are always like, no, no, tell me exactly what you fucking think. Yeah. Like, tell me, tell me what you think. But like when a guy buys a knife, you have that honeymoon period. Like when you first get a knife, you're like, I love this thing. I love everything <laughs> about it. There's nothing wrong yeah, with it. It's fucking exactly perfect. And then about. like six days into it, you're looking at it and you're like, how did, what the fuck is this? Like, how did I not see that? Why is that off? Why is that? Why is it got this? Why has it got this one spot where there's like a tick, 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 where the detent yeah. ball rolls across? What is that? Why, why, why does the handle like have that? a bump right there? Yeah. Why is there, why is there play in that? When I get ready to, yeah. when I move, why is the detent, like, why is there detent lash? And I do that, like I do that in videos. And I've had guys literally send me a knife that they've had for two days that they spent like sixteen hundred dollars on. They're like, I want you to do a video, and I do a video, and they're like, Jesus Christ, I can't ever unsee that. It's so much easier if they just see it. Like I already know what you're gonna say, so I'll go ahead and send the knife in. That way that they don't, that way they don't get that like Grail knife, and they're like, it's so perfect. And then yeah. like they get it back from me, and they're like, God damn it, he's fucking right. <laughs> He's right. I didn't notice all that. The money. Fuck! Yeah. I spent so well, much I mean, money nothing, on that. Nothing ever. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. So I I disagree. I disagree. I can honestly say the first time in over a thousand videos, I the have per- used the word. Knife, I have huh? used the word perfect to describe a knife. Oh and boy! It was this? It was this knife. What is that? This is that. This is that deadlock OTF auto. Oh. Huh. And it is it's a knife I can't have $1,600 auto, but you can have it. You just can't carry it. Like I can have it. I just can't carry it. Same thing out here in California. I've never had, I've never had anything that is just like in its individual category of knife. I've never had anything that is just perfect. Like the way it feels in hand action ease of carry like the way it feels your hand and then once it's open the balance and typically these dagger style blades they're a little blunt they're a little thick this thing is terrifyingly sharp it's been here for like maybe two weeks and i've cut myself probably five times with it i like it's brutally sure you're like god damn it i did it again yeah well can can you baton with it yeah no you can't it's not that's not what kind of knife it is but I'm saying, like, as far as like construction standards, like all the little wickets that make this knife what it is yeah. are executed perfectly. Compared to, I said in its category, like, no, absolutely not. Uh, but that's the thing when you start jumping categories. Oh yeah, you, you run into problems. Like, there's no fucking way I'd be able to do with that what I can do with this. Like this is, this is some shit that you go out in the street when fucking. Like when the city's on fire and you go out and you're like, get out of my fucking way. I'm getting yeah. out, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. I'm cutting, I'm cutting the roofs off cars and shit. Like this in its category could almost be perfect. This is the biggest microtech I've ever seen. Yeah, man. What did that cost? Jeez. Fucking, I don't even I don't know. I haven't I haven't even looked at it yet. I haven't done a review, but I probably do know. Probably a lot. Probably a lot. Yeah. Like, showed up and I was like, that is the biggest fucking microtech box I've ever seen. I didn't know Man. that microtech made packaging that big. It's literally. Like, yeah. The packaging like, probably costs more than a knife. I was like, that's, that's not, I've never seen a microtech box that big. I didn't even know they made knives that big. I, I, didn't <laughs> I, mean, I, saw, I saw, we were, we were looking. So I did a live feed on, I think it was, it was, I think it was like Monday. It might've, no, it was Wednesday. I did a live feed on Wednesday and I, I was talking about weird knives and I happened to run into that one on like we line. And I was like, man, I never seen that before. That's a good looking knife. I'd like to see one. And one of my paying members DM me because I have a I have a server. It's like Discord. Mm-hmm. And he's uh, he's like, I got two of them. Would you like to see one of them? And I was like, yes, yes, I would. <laughs> What's would I ever be able to use it? That's an M390. M390. Oh, yeah. Probably- yeah, that's not that's not a small piece of some very expensive no steel. that's that's like a hundred dollar piece of steel <laughs> that's more just the steel <laughs> i guarantee you because i guarantee it was a lot bigger before it went into Hell the fucking yeah. machine <laughs> i'm like yep. that, that was that was pricey because i i know what i paid for for 20 cv which is basically m390 uh when i got enough to make the knives that i made i was like <laughs> they were like well it's gonna cost this i'm like 
Oh, that's going to definitely impact the cost of the end use. You know, like I, yeah. I had to reach out to people. I was like, ah, oh, guys, uh, you guys that uh, said you wanted knives. Um, yeah, I just priced the steel and uh, it's going to be more it's than we lot. thought it was. It's yeah. not going to be cheap. So if the people were like, why are your knives cost so much? And I was like, because the <laughs> Cause piece the of steel, steel costs so much. piece of steel it's in, it's fucking damn near $150, $200 for that blank. Yeah. That's uh, people don't understand that. Like, why, why, I don't understand why your knife costs that much to get it made. I'm like, cause I'm making a custom knife. It takes several weeks. I do custom heat treat, just the steel that's in it. Yeah. I mean, you're sitting in front of an uh, oven for a day and a half, just heat. Treating I it. fucking hate heat treat. Okay. So the other question, what was your first knife? How did you like, what, what was your uh, first knife? It was a, uh, my very first knife. Yeah. Was a, uh, I actually have it. Uh, oh, I don't know. I love where. hearing that. Um, I have it somewhere. Um, it's a knife my grandfather gave me when I was like seven. Yep. That's, I love hearing that because that's like the, the guys that got into knives young. Yeah. So the, the first, and, like, you know, the first, year. like I've got a, I've got something sharp in my pocket. Like, yeah. You know, it's like you, you've crossed that, that age. <laughs> Like my dad got this for me when I was like five. Oh, okay. So like, so that I could, so I had something. Up that looks could, really uh, familiar. It is a uh, Camelus Silver Sword number forty-two. You know what? I' pretty sure my uncle had one of those. But I guarantee his blade, if it's as old as mine, his no, blade is as worn down as mine is. No, his was his was in like brand new, perfect condition. He oh, yeah, had a bunch of them hanging. He had like a, a a picture frame with a bunch, you know, a little tiny knife collection hanging on the wall. Yeah. And I think that that was one of them that was in there. And I don't know whatever happened to it. Um, I think I I might have had it and then it got lost. But I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I've I just, I've had this. So my dad got. I've had this for forty. I was like five, so I've had this for like forty-three years. Yeah, I, I, that, that's an old. That's old for sure. Well, you can see, like, if you look at the wear on it, because like, it had almost a, yep. a almost like a, a satin finish, and I pocket wore it polished <laughs> on the on the ends and stuff. It's just yeah, that's crazy. So many squirrels that got skinned with this thing. This thing, that's what it was for. My dad was like, "All right, you're old enough. You start hunting. You need something. You, you know." Yeah. Go out in the woods, go out in the woods with that little 20 gauge uh tops breech loader to break over. Um he's like, you gotta have something you can skin some squirrels with. I I don't know how many squirrels got skinned with this thing. The population of some small towns. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But well, we're coming up on coming up on the two hour mark. I usually don't like to keep people around unless they want to stick around. So, but I would ask you. Uh, give us a funny story that has happened to you here in the last few months since you've been gone on YouTube. Anything interesting or funny happen? Uh, I'm gonna think of something once I'm once I'm off of here. I'm sure. I say, I, fuck shit. I'm like, I oh, I should have said that was great. Uh, I don't have to think about it. I, I don't have anything on top of my head. Um, <laughs> You can come in later and put it in the comment section. Like, oh, here's a story. I'll type story. it in. Yeah, I know. You should have asked so, me that one in the beginning and let me think about it the whole time. But that's, that's, I don't, I don't do that. I do this like Gonzo <laughs> style, like catch you, catch you by surprise because I like the look. Uh, like, I love doing that to other knife makers. Like, oh, if you could take one of my favorite questions to ask knife makers is like, if you could take the blade from any knife, the handle from any knife, the locking mechanism from any knife, and like the carry like and materials like however like it does you don't have to do the you don't even have to do the logistics or the engineering of making it fit like what would be your perfect knife like just oh, the franken knife yeah that's such a hard question to answer that because it's like well what are you using it for you know right? what i mean like what like what are you what's the what's the idea behind it like that right? has to be answered before any of that well, like, so like I've asked a bunch of people, you get some weird answers because like mine is like an Endura handle uh, with a, a more traditional drop point blade uh, with a, with the lock mechanism. So mine's not really hard. Mine's basically just like a drop, like a, a, a like maybe a clip point Endura. 
you know, yeah. it, it's pretty simple, but I would want like thicker wood handles or, or like carbon fiber or something that's nice and light. Alex is looking at that knife and he's like, Jesus, $1,600. I spent that on wood. <laughs> <laughs> I did spend it on wood. I spent it on windows and wood this last month. I bet. Uh, is that so? You so know what? Is that what that knife actually costs? Yeah, Six, sixteen hundred bucks. But okay, so this is oh, not. I thought a you were talking about the uh, the micro tech. No, 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 okay. no. This okay. we were talking about this. Oh, but this gotcha. is this, so. This isn't. This isn't like a production model. This is Grant and Gavin Hawk on their farm. They make like limited runs. Yeah, they're, yeah. these are all serialized and stuff, and uh, and they they're all hand tuned. Like they they. They go through and they they build up small batch, you know what I mean. Actually, this yep. is not serial. I don't think it's serialized. But uh, but yeah, and then another cool thing like this has got a a gripper clip, and I was kind of on the fence about it. I was like, I wonder how that works. It's like a like a clipboard, like the thing that's on a clipboard. Yeah, in and out of pocket, it's beautiful. It's great. But if you've got thick pants and it doesn't want to go on, you can yeah. just lift it up, drop it on. I'm like, that is. Yeah, I'd be. <laughs> 1600 bucks i'd be afraid to do anything with that oh i don't drop it on the mine. floor man all right it 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 lives its life at my house in and out of its case like, yeah. I was, like i'll put it in my pocket just to, like because i you know i got to do a full review of it but so i meant to ask you i don't know if you want to i don't know if you want to put it out there but like i so outside of the youtube channel what i, I don't remember if you ever said what is your actual like full profession because i know that you you have a job construction just because you do construction like full time yeah i mean so I, I mean my grandfather was a builder i've been in the industry since before i can remember yeah um, and then uh just basically a long history of residential commercial uh some more specialized industries within the industry for a while and then yeah. uh on the YouTube. So, yeah. Well, here's the that's, thing. That's pretty much it. <laughs> you honestly have, you're honestly in that realm with subscribers that, like, if once you get it going, you could just do YouTube and then do other things that you wanted to do for fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. Like, have a, like, YouTube could pay the bills and you could do the side gig, like, whatever it was you want to do, like making straps and stuff as a side gig and still record it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean that's kind of how it's it's sort of playing out right now. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, YouTube makes it makes okay money. It's definitely not a full full time. I mean, I could you know I could make a lot more working full time outside of doing yeah. YouTube, um, but a lot of that's just because I haven't you know haven't been posting videos. Um, yeah, because um, I I have had some really you know full time earnings on YouTube depending on which video you yeah. know gets a lot of views but it's so it's so hit or miss like you have to supplement it with something else i see um, I, I i'm retired i'm i'm military i'm uh, medically retired from the military so people are like oh well you've only got like nine thousand subscribers no way you can do i like what i make on youtube and my retirement it's and then what my wife makes we're pretty much breaking even we're still yeah we're not we're not but we're you know we're we're not it's not like i'm spending thousands and thousands of dollars out of our savings every month but yeah. The problem is, like, I'm on medical restrictions from for what I can do, and now I've got this intestinal issue that they're like, "Yeah, you're probably gonna have to have surgery." So I have to be really careful because, that, like, the mm -hmm. doc was like, hey, "Like, you can't do a lot of these things. You get, like, you get hit in the gut with something, and you're gonna rupture that that area, and and then you like, you're gonna be in real big trouble." And I'm like, "Yeah." Fuck. So, but yeah, I, I it's I, I have some stuff that we're working on right now with some other channels and stuff like that, but I'm. Yeah, I would. I'll tell you what. I would love to do more stuff because, like I said, uh, I made a comment on your post. There's a handful of channels that I've that either inspired me to make my own channel or were channels that I really respected for the honesty and and everything. And one of yours is one of those channels. And I've I've wanted to do this for a long time. Oh, uh, thanks. Just to be able appreciate to have you it. on here. <laughs> no, I yeah, appreciate we'll you coming because we'll, I know you're yeah, busy. Yeah, we'll have to do it again. I mean, yeah, I think we Maybe just we'll barely it. scratched the surface of some of these. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> some of these things maybe, maybe you can come up with your right. franken knife in the time maybe we'll do it on your channel maybe we'll do it on your channel one yeah days. that'd be fun we could do i have to figure out how to do the uh do the live thing through my channel 
just um just just Streamyard. i think it cost me like i think it cost me like 20 bucks a month for this okay and you don't even have to download anything it's all well so right now server. i don't have internet i don't i don't have any internet i'm on yeah. uh, uh i'm on the uh, 5g on my phone yeah but uh well, that's what i'm I, saying i like, probably won't have internet till next year because they're ooh. they're literally running the cables like today so ooh, that's pricey well i'm not paying for it oh okay I they're it. they're all they're running them to all uh all the neighborhoods around here so oh okay i'm not paying i'm not paying for i'll just stay on this forever like you get you get that skylink that uh it doesn't work. Link, I, but... I got uh, I have too many trees. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> so quick we're, story. We're like we're in a dead zone. When we lived in uh, when we lived in Japan, uh, the house we had uh, my first when I first met my wife, uh, the first uh, station I was at in southern Japan uh, where I met my wife, we got uh, we had somebody tell us it was like, no, no, you can use uh, it was called Sky Perfect. And it was the little. Yeah, uh, it's like direct TV and they're like, oh, no, no, you've, you've, it's fine. You can do it. And we put it up exactly where they told us how they told it to. And it was fine. But like there was my balcony where this where this antenna was. And then there's a little walkway like you literally could not drive up the house unless you had a scooter, like like a motorized, like a, yeah. like a moped. And then there was this big hill that was nothing but just a bamboo forest when they would cut it down every year. Well, when the guy came out and told us we would be fine with it. It was winter and the bamboo had all been cut down. But then come spring, bamboo is the fastest growing thing. And yeah. they would harvest, they would cut it like every other week. But it, grows it, it was fine until, until it got windy and all that shit would move. If it yeah. was straight, we could get the signal through the, through the bamboo. The second the wind would blow, your TV would stop. And you're like, this is fucking bullshit. So I know exactly what you're yep. talking about. That's yeah. How we that's how we lived for like the first year we were married. Like, ah, shit. <laughs> yep. Can't get satellite, can't get cable. Oh, nothing. Can't get phone. <laughs> well, the I'll price tell you, you what. gotta pay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would absolutely like I've seen some of the uh videos and stuff you did uh around the area, and I was like, man, I would I would love to move back to the country, but unfortunately I've got a daughter that's 15 years old that has only ever lived in the city. And my wife is yeah. from a city, city in Japan. And I, I keep talking about it. We should go back to Ohio and move out to the woods. And she's like, no, I mean, even moving back to, no. yeah, I don't know. City in Ohio would be better than, or be different than. There's no good cities in Ohio. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Even, <laughs> no even going to a city like, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I after, Cincinnati. after living, well, yeah, it, well, Columbus. that's that's one of the things we talk. About. But here's the thing, like even some of the big cities in Ohio, even for me, because I live yeah, I in Cincinnati. Yeah, you said Cincinnati and Columbus. I, yeah. I I I lived in some of the biggest cities in the world. Like I lived just yeah. I I literally lived like thirty minutes outside of Tokyo, and my wife, um is from the third largest city in Japan, which is Fukuoka. So like people are like, Oh, so it's the third biggest city in Japan. I was like, third biggest city in Japan makes one of the, makes some of the largest cities in the United States look like, like small towns. Like you, even San Diego in comparison, as big as San Diego is, it still doesn't feel like a big city compared to, to Tokyo yeah. area. It's, yeah. it's insane. How, how, how incredibly populated the cities in Japan are, but then the weird thing is out. Once you get out of the city, you're in the country. Yeah. There's just like these clusters. It's not like the urban sprawl like we have here. Yeah. So, uh, I've got, I got Cincinnati to the South of me and Dayton up North. Yeah. They're not good. <laughs> Neither one of those are good. Choices. Like, where do I live? I live. It's like, I'm like the taint. I live between a ball sack and a butthole. <laughs> Which one yep. stinks worse? So, well, I'll tell you what, Alex, it's been fun. We'll have to do this again. I, I definitely, I definitely enjoyed this. This was, yeah. the abs this was absolutely not a live feed for my, my, uh, my subscribers. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't have cared if there was like five people here. I joked about it at the beginning, like y'all wanted him and now no one's here. And I, this was absolutely <laughs> one that I definitely wanted to do for me. So. Yeah, we'll have I to, will, uh, we'll have to do it again and 
get dive a little deeper into some of these uh yeah maybe maybe do a shop maybe get it done and you can do us <laughs> you can get us a, a shop tour you can walk around uh yeah walk around and done, show us the finished shop if it ever fin- if i ever get it done is it is it is that a is that separate from the house yeah yeah it's a separate so, completely separate it's not attached. that's what i so it's like it's like a it's like a detached garage that you're yep. turning into a workshop yeah it's t- uh it's technically a little bigger than a two car it's uh it's 32 by 24 25 the typical the typical midwest detached two and a yep. half car like two cars in a fucking workshop kind of garage yeah. that yeah. everybody two car, has two cars and eight feet yeah exactly <laughs> two cars and a and a and a little workspace yeah yep. this one's built a little bit differently than the, the typical one but you know design wise but yeah it's it's you know what what you, exactly what you just said you know two yeah. and a half <laughs> yeah that's that's and that's a thing that like i i tell people about that out here in california they're like what and i was like yeah detached like a two and a half detached and they're like you mean like a granny flat and i was like no like a fucking garage yeah not like not like a two-in-one so out here they have what it's called a two-in-one it's so it's two houses on one lot and typically yeah. it's it's a it's what they call a granny flat where you would put your your mother in law in, yeah. in a shed so that you don't have to fucking hear her so she's, she's not, not in, in your house. goddamn house all the time. <laughs> she's got her own kitchen and shit. You don't have to see your mother-in-law seven days a week. You just like yeah. lock the doors. We're like, nah, go back to your fucking house. That's why we bought this place. But that's that's basically that's basically what they would call it. You're like me, like a granny flat. I'm like, no, my fucker, like a detached two and a half car garage. That's a typical Midwest thing. Yeah, yeah. So, but. All right. Well, we will get this set up. I will make sure everybody knows that we're going to do it again. Maybe we'll do, uh, maybe when you get your shop up, we can do like a, a talk about sharpening and, uh, the differences between the way you sharpen and the way I do the convex in hand. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. So yep. guys, I'm going to end this. It's been two hours and 11 minutes and it's been a lot two of fun. Two hours for me. already. Jeez. Yeah. That's, that's what Nick Shabazz said we did. He's, Nick Shabazz was like, hey, there's no way we're going to do two hours. And I was like, two, two and a half hours later, I was like, Nick, look at the clock. And he's like, holy shit, how'd that happen? Yeah. Yeah. So guys, this has been fun. Like I said, I didn't give a shit whether you guys liked it or not. I did this because I enjoyed it. So I'm going to get out of here. Uh, if you are one of the paying members, stand by because I am probably going to do the drawing on StreamYard. I'll send you guys a link. It's not going to be live. It's just going to be you guys. I'm probably going to do the drawing for that knife that I keep telling you guys I was going to give away at the beginning of the month. So if you're not already on the Gilded server, you need to be because that's where I, an- that's where I announced the winners. And if you don't get with me in 48 hours, I pick another winner. So I set that Gilded server up for a reason. So. Guys, I love you all. Alex, thanks again for stopping by. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks if for you having want, me. If you want to stick around for a second, we can talk when, when I close this out, and then, uh, yeah, then sure. we'll go. So, all right, guys, I'm out. Take it easy. <laughs>